Um, I hope you have all taken out time to pray. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to say Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And also, um, Okay, I want to. What about the other one? Yes, yeah. Okay, I want to say uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everyone. Um, welcome to the New Year, um, and also Happy New Month to everyone. Thank you so much. I think we're having some little glitch. Um, I learned that uh, some hackers are also trying to assess the Zoom link. <coughs> this is what always happens when. You open it for everybody. When you try to do good, people always come in to do all kinds of things. So uh, maybe next time we'll have to make it restricted. Um, thank you so much. I think uh, before we go for the interactive session, I, I will need us to first of all look at some few things. I will give some little emphasis, then um, we move. If you are with your Bibles, um, go with me to the book of Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33, we begin from, um, from 6. The Bible said, um, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Wisdom and stability shall be wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation the fear of the lord in his treasure most times i always prefer to go a little bit down um, maybe let's say a verse ahead so let's look at five verse five says something he said the lord is exalted for he dwelleth on high he hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He has filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. So, the Lord God has been exalted. He dwelleth on high. But somehow, Zion has been filled with judgment and righteousness. It is the intention of the Lord in this new season that righteousness... And judgment is what we are going to begin to experience. There is going to be righteousness and judgment coming in this season. And in righteousness and judgment with God war in this time. Many people are going to begin to experience the manifestation of the righteousness of God. Others are going to begin to experience the judgment of God in this season. We are living in bad times now. 2022 is going to be a time where there is going to be increased level of righteousness, but also increased level of the judgment of God. God is going to bring that righteousness. God is going to bring judgment. It depends on which side you are, what you do to be able to subscribe to either righteousness or subscribe to his judgment. The Bible says God is exalted. The Lord, Yahweh Elohim, is exalted and he dwells on high. But he's going to fill the entire of Zion with judgment and righteousness. But the Bible further said that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of this time that we are living in. And the strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord will be the treasure. So what I'm trying to let us understand is this. We are living in a time where there's going to be judgment, there's going to be righteousness. First of all, you're going to begin in the house of God. There's going to be judgment and righteousness upon believers, judgment and righteousness upon ministers. Judgment and righteousness upon pastors. God is going to come to empower them that are walking in righteousness. But he's going to come to judge them that are living in disobedience. Then, as many that are looking for a bailout system out of the current challenge, they must embrace wisdom. They must embrace knowledge. Because wisdom and knowledge, wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability is going to be what is going to guarantee our stability even in this time. So we must of necessity come to an understanding of the necessity of wisdom. 
and knowledge. The knowledge of God will be your guarantee in this time. Right now is time upon which only them that know the Lord, their God, that can be strong and that will do exploit. We are living in a time where ignorance is not permitted. Why? Because the judgment of God will come upon you because of your ignorance. The judgment of God will befall you. You will be swayed to and fro by every wind of doctrine because of your ignorance. In this time, we need wisdom. We need the knowledge of God. Because judgment is coming and righteousness is coming. And as many that could not be able to decipher, they are going to be challenged. Also, go with me to the book of Daniel 11. Daniel 11. Daniel 11 from 13. Daniel 11 from 13. The Bible says, For the sheep of cheating shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return, and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And they shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolation. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. What we saw is that there is going to be perversion. What we say there is going to be wickedness. There is going to be desolation. But there will be few among, you know, that we have an understanding and a knowledge of who God is. These few among that have an understanding and knowledge of who God is, they are going to be the ones that we instruct. They are going to be the ones that we educate, that we teach, and that we guide others in righteousness. The Lord God, are we connected? Are we okay? The Lord God is going to begin to send judgment and righteousness. But this judgment and righteousness, them that have understanding, them that have knowledge, them that have wisdom will be exempted from this judgment. They will only subscribe to the righteousness of God. But if they subscribe to the righteousness of God, yet again, they cannot be able to decipher the sheep and the people that are bringing desolation, bringing perversion, you know, people that are going to be perverting the holy covenant of the Lord. There is going to be an alliance, an, an alliance of darkness and light in this time that we are living in. We are living in bad times where there is going to be a perversion, a mixture of that which is profane. So only them that have discernment by the wisdom of God can be able to decipher how to be able to walk in light in this time. Because darkness is going to begin to come on the increase in this season. But as desolation increase, as desolation increase, there is going to also come an increase in men that will be instructors, men that will be able to instruct men in righteousness. These are times and seasons where only them that are strong, them that know the Lord, they are God that can do exploit. We are living in a time where you cannot walk by assumption. You have to walk by accuracy and precision if you must be able to understand the things that God is doing. And them that cannot rightly divide the word of truth in this time are going to be swayed off. Them that cannot actually divide the word of truth at this time, they may be prayer warriors, they may be intercessors, but they will need to be able to partner with Isakas. Now is the time where Isakas will be put upon the front line because we need an understanding of times and season. An understanding of times and season comes from the knowledge of times and season. An understanding of times and season comes of, come from the application of the wisdom of the understanding of the seasons. Now is the time. Where you can only be able to try by wisdom, by understanding, by knowledge. You cannot just do this anyhow again. No, not in this time. Why? Because as perversion increase, as desolation increase, as darkness increase, you must be careful. Because by increase of darkness comes the judgment of God. We cannot underestimate the power of the mercy of God. That is true. But the mercy of God is not without the judgment of God. You must be able to understand that the spiritual system of the mercy of God comes with an exemption in keeping to a covenant. But anytime that covenant is destroyed, as we see, that men are coming to destroy the holy covenant of the Lord, according to the book of Daniel. Because the holy covenant of the Lord is going to come and be destroyed, the mercy system of God can no longer hold bound. The reason for the mercy of God is the covenant of the Lord being preserved. 
If the covenant of God is preserved and there is disobedience, mercy can still speak. But if the covenant of God is no longer there, mercy cannot speak because mercy is upon the strength of the covenant of the Lord. And we are coming upon a time where God will release judgment and righteousness. Why? Because the covenant has been broken. And because the covenant has been broken, judgment is coming. And because the covenant has been broken, judgment comes, then righteousness will yet again be introduced so that men can be able to enact a new covenant with God. But the men that will enact a new covenant with God are men that have an understanding of the laws of God and men that do know the Lord their God that will establish this new covenant then walk by wisdom then instruct others. We are living upon a time right now where God is going to be hinting upon men that have an understanding of who he is to be able to administer counsel, to be able to lead others astray, to be able to lead others aright. Because there are many that are going to begin to lead men astray because many are coming as sheep. But in wolf clothing, to come actually as shepherd leading sheep, to be able to uh, actually pervert the things of God, pervert the operations of God, pervert the systems of the kingdom, pervert the covenant of God. But many are going to begin to rise, rise up in righteousness, to begin to instruct in the body of Christ. So there are many people that God is going to begin to give them the privilege and the right to be able to instruct. Their encounters, their disciplines with God will come basically in to be able to instruct. Because by the time you begin to see increase in perversion, increase in darkness, is because God, you know, is about to come and judge. Because that's the intention of the devil, to pervert so that God will no longer but destroy. So if devil intends, in devil succeed in perverting creation, God cannot but destroy creation so that God can recreate again. But we are living in a time where God does not intend really to destroy. God will actually judge in his judgment is take away people that actually are perverting the holy covenant. Then empower men that are working in righteousness to be able to instruct and guide others aright. Which part and which side are you? Do you truly really know the Lord your God? Because if you do not, if you do not, this is the time where you have to begin to go seek the Lord again. Who may not be really found in public places? You must seek the Lord that can only be found in the hidden, found only in the secret. Now is the time to spend and dwell more with the Lord. Why? Because you cannot be able to decipher between that which is right and that which is profane. Because we are living in a time where there is a mixture, a mixture of good and bad, a mixture of profanity. You must be able to understand that there is actually a season that we are coming in right now where the perversion is about to be increased. But only them that can be able to discern, them that can be able to decipher, can be able, can be able to uh, actually instruct others out of the current situation, also and be able to salvage themselves out of the current bondage. Yet again, there is a great need for us to have an understanding of wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge is an awareness of the truth, right? Understanding is an assimilation of the truth. Wisdom is the application of the truth. It is not just good enough for us to know in this season. You can know a thing that you don't understand. We must journey from knowledge into understanding. Understanding, we, don't, we cannot just know that we ought to pray. Yes, pray to what intent. We cannot just only know that we ought to fast. Fast to what intent? Everybody is fasting now. Everybody is praying now. To what intent? We must be able to understand our corporate responsibility. That is when our alignment can be strong enough. We must be able to understand to what intent we are doing the things we are doing. To what intent we are preaching daily. To what intent we are going for that program daily. To what intent are you organizing those meetings? Because you see, we can spend millions organizing meetings and yet again the impact is not measurable. We can spend millions organizing things and doing things and yet again we cannot see a transformation there. We must be able to understand the purpose and the goals for the things we do. Else, we we'll work together with the devil and we we'll waste our time doing whatever we're doing and the impact will be minimal. So we must be able to understand that in this time, God is bringing judgment and God is bringing righteousness. Judgment so that he can take away them that are, their heart is not on to genuinely into what what the Lord intend to do, and also righteousness, so that them that are genuinely to what God is doing can be empowered, so that only them that know the Lord their God can be strong, then they will do exploit. But like I said, you must be able to have understanding, not just only knowledge. Right now, the things you know, you must join it from knowledge to understanding, and that will require a heightened level of meditation. Right now, it's not time to be attending program as you are doing the things you are know. Now, it's time to remain with the Lord to bring you to a point of understanding. This is a season and time where men need to understand the moment of when they are. Many things took us by surprise last year. This year, we cannot permit things to take us by surprise. We must be able to come to a point where we have a clear-cut understanding, deciphering times and seasons, having wisdom enough to be able to know what we ought to do in this season. By the time we have understanding, understanding is not enough. We must move into wisdom. Wisdom is the application of what we have understand. Why? Because we are living in a time where we need to be able to apply what we know. Many of us know so many things, yet again, we cannot apply. Let me tell you the truth. 
Many years ago, the Lord told me if you do self as prophecy, don't profit themselves. Men have to rise to profit prophecy. Every kind of prophecy prophesied upon you is a waste of time. If you cannot rise up to profit, it's a waste of time. Many of you have dreamed many dreams, seen many things. In fact, you know many things. You have taught many people many things, but yet you can't even apply it. How is how on the world can you get a result out of what you do not apply? You see, let me tell you, this season is time for application. You must move from what you know to understanding it, then to begin to apply it. It doesn't matter how you are, high or low. Right now is the time to begin to apply the little things you know. You must move into application. It is in the application that men are distinguished. Strong men are men that make tremendous impact, and not just men that hear. And men that do, you must be able to do to apply what you know. The Bible speaking in the book of Acts of the Apostle. He said, I write unto you three of those about the things that Jesus has begun both to teach and to do. Right now it's time for all to begin to do what we teach. Many people have been teaching. Have you been doing? Now it's time to do. If you push people to walk by faith, now it's time for you to walk by faith. It doesn't really matter. You must be able to take away your sight and begin to walk by faith. Yet, sight informs faith, but oftentimes you may not be able to see by sight. You must be able to understand by faith and begin to walk by faith. So now is the time when you need to begin to apply the things you actually know. That is where wisdom comes into view. Okay. Go with me to the book of Second Timothy. We shall soon move to the interactive session in just a few times so that we can, I can just answer some few of your questions. I need to give you a little bit chat. In the book of uh, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy from, um, from verse um, 15, the next half from 14, the Bible speaking said, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they, that they strive not about wars to no profit but to subverting of the hearers. He says, study to show thyself approved. A workman needed not to be ashamed. He says, study to show thyself approved. A workman needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the world of truth. He says, but shun profane and vain babbling. For the will Increase unto more ungodliness. You know, Paul was counseling his son Timothy about something very profound. Timothy has been found to try to prove his level of understanding among many others. You know, sometimes we are living in a time where people want to prove things. I have stopped proving to people a long time ago. When you live your life, try to prove things, try to copy, try to do many of those things. You see, people become your standard and no longer God. And when people become your standard, there is little you can do. I get what I'm saying. And you will not even know whether you are right or you are wrong. You must live your life in accuracy, in alignment to God in this season. You are coming to a point where you cannot be following the patterns of men. You must follow the patterns of God. We are living upon a time where your study, your fasting, your prayer, your devotion is unto God, not unto men. You must do things to show yourself approved unto God, not necessarily unto men. Everything we do, trying to be approved by men, is a waste of time. You see, men can shake hands with you today, they will, they will say, fight you tomorrow. Men can laugh with you tomorrow, to, today, tomorrow they won't laugh with you. Men can like you today, tomorrow they hate you. This is just how life works. So what you must understand that when God approves of you, is the greatest asset you can ever have. We must come to a point where we study, where we pray, where we fast. To show ourselves approved before God. So that God can give us placement among men. The counsel that Timothy was given by Paul. Is that Timothy you must learn to actually shun other kinds of vain arguments. Many people today argue on all kinds of things in the body of Christ. I don't really know why they do it. But let me tell you the truth. If we focus on the things that divide us we may never be united. We have to focus on the things that unite us. There are so many things that unite us as a people. Rather than many things that divide us. There will be all kinds of things that will divide us. All of us have different kinds of likes, different kinds of appetite, different kinds of desire, different kinds of feelings. So we cannot focus on those things. We have to focus on the things that unite us. Then we must be able to shun all kinds of babblings, babblings and arguments and all kinds of things. Then you know, because most of these things take us more to ungodliness. That's what Timothy was counseled by Paul. But he now said, you know, that he has to be able to study. He has to take out time to study so that he can show himself approved as a workman that needed not to be ashamed, that he can rightly divide this world of truth. Many of you do not know scriptures except the one that was quoted by your father. Many of you know no scripture except the one the mentor quote. You see, let me tell you the truth. You must spend time with the word of God. The word of God is your soul backbone for survival. 
It only takes the word of God for a man to be guarantee of excellent results in upon the face of the earth. Anything you get mystical will remain mystical. But anything that is sure upon the foundation of the word of God, sure upon the condition of the revelation, will stand the test of time. Men that stood over time are not just men that have one encounter. They are men that encounter the Lord continually daily. If I don't see Jesus in the spirit, I will see him through the word of God. If I cannot have an encounter seeing the Cherubim and Seraphim, I can see the Lord upon it. This is a short, short word of prophecy. We are in a time right now where men will be deceived to and fro by every wind of doctrine. But you must stand steadfast upon the liberty of what scripture has given unto you. So that you are not entangled by every word that doesn't speak of the divine. You must be able to understand that we are living upon a time where your understanding of the word of God is what will guide you. Your understanding of the knowledge of God is what will guide you. The knowledge of God that you will have will safeguard you in doctrine. By the time you begin to pray, you will join into understanding because you see, understanding is an assimilation of what you know. But this understanding is a factor of prayer. When a man begins to pray, I don't know about you, but I understand the scripture better when I pray. By the time I begin to pray as I study, you see, the scripture begins to lighten upon. So because prayer brings the realm of reality. That realm of reality can only come when a man begins to pray. So by the time you pray, you come into understanding of what you know. Then you now move into the realm of wisdom. Wisdom is the application of what you know. Many of you know so many things in this scripture, you are not applying them. You see, sometimes the challenge is that the awareness, you just know it, but you don't understand it. By the time you understand, now faith is built within you. You know, so when that faith is built within you, that prayer you pray will bring you to that understanding. When that understanding comes, you are not you need to wisdom to be able to apply. Wisdom is you coming to a point and say, Okay, this is what I study, this is what I understand, this is what my prayer has been able to assimilate. Now let me act it. Because if you don't act upon the word of God, you can't get any result. You don't be part of the talkers. You talk this today, you change tomorrow. Tomorrow you say you are blue, next tomorrow you say you are yellow, another day you are white, another day you are green. Your conviction changes every day because you don't know the Lord. If you know the Lord, your conviction has steadfast. Okay now. So these are the key players. You must go after the key players in this season. We must go after the key players in this time. We are living in a time where we need to go after the key players. The first key player I told you is your knowledge. Your knowledge of the word of God is pivotal. Many of you never see the need to study. How many books have you read last year? I can't even count. You have not even been able to read anyone. And yet you want to begin to be, live a life of victory upon the face. You will not. You will be at the back. You will not be at the front. Anybody that must lead must be a leader. You must spend time reading something. You must study the scripture. You must study the writings of men. How can you be able to follow the strength, follow the patterns of men that have worked with God and you have not studied about them? We are a joker. You must be able to study the patterns and the lives of people that work with God. Get their messages, get their books, read them, listen to them. It's not about them. Forget the money you pay for it. It's about you. It empowers you. It unlocks you. It unlocks your creativity. It unlocks your possibility. It unlocks your potential. It activates you. Jesus Christ study. You must study. Jesus Christ pray. You must pray. What are the principles of Jesus? I always say many people follow the person of Jesus. They don't follow the principle of Jesus. Principles are not bad. Many people look at them as bad. They are not bad. No matter how much you pray and fast, if you don't follow the principle of Jesus, you will still fail in life. Principle of Jesus guarantee for your victory in this life. The person of Jesus guarantee for your eternal security. That you believe in the person of Jesus. Yes, you won't die and go to heaven. Hell, you will go to heaven. But what about his principles? You must follow his principle. What did Jesus Christ do? Study the scriptures. What did he do? What did he do? How did he live a life upon the face of the earth that was guarantee of superior living? Jesus Christ pray, you must pray. He fast, you must fast. He study, you must study. He give, you must give. He love, you must love. These things are natural things. You must be able to live by them. Many of us, you see, we are deprived of obedience to the principle of Jesus. Yet we are obedient to the person of Jesus. So you must be able to understand that you must go for knowledge in this season. Now it's not time for you to be ignorant. You must go for knowledge. The Bible speaks in the book of Isaiah. He said, because you have rejected knowledge, me too have rejected you. God can just reject a man because the man do not know. He said, because you do not know, neither do you not understand. You will perish like one of those bees. You must perish because you do not know. It's a terrible situation. Because your vision, eh? Your vision becomes fresh every day because of your knowledge and understanding. Even the anointing of God upon your life, the more you know, the more you are fresh every day. So, you must go after knowledge. Then go after understanding. How? I told you. The more you pray, the more you meditate, the more you understand faster. Many of you spend time with people. You are not spending time with God. You are not spending time with your books. Spend more time alone, reading and studying and learning and praying. You will become more better than wisdom. 
Then the next thing you have to look up to is revelation. You see, as you have knowledge, you have understanding, you have wisdom, the next thing is revelation. Revelation is what everyone runs with. When you see the doctrine of this church, the doctrine of this ministry, the doctrine of this ministry, is because of the revelation they have. Everybody has a revelation that governs their life. Revelation is personal. Personal, the personality of the revelation that is given to you is so that it can fashion your life according to an order. Anybody that cannot receive a revelation from God cannot be guided by God. The things that guide us in this journey is the revelation we receive from God daily. You see, revelation is private to the core of your being. When you receive it, it's alive upon you. This is the thing that makes people strong. You see, oftentimes it's not just because they read the scripture. The scripture itself is the revelation that God revealed to people. When you study all through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's what God revealed to people. But you know, God can still reveal things to you that may not even be in the scripture. So you must move to the, to the realm of revelation. You see, what is God revealing to you? Most of the things that God will reveal to you may be controversial. In fact, some of those things, you, people may not even like it, but it doesn't really matter because it's God talking to you. If you are sure that it's what God really revealed to you, then you apply it in your life. When you apply it, if it works, you see, the funny enough, people, people follow the things that works. We are living upon a time where people follow what works. It's what works that people follow. It doesn't matter whatever you are If it doesn't work, nobody will follow you. You see, enough of all those don't follow results, don't follow your joker. Let me tell you that everybody follows results. I dare to follow results. They are not producing results. If truly what you call faith eh, is faith, you should produce results. Everybody that works with God has a result. You see, the result that even you remain in faith until dying is a result. You follow me as I follow Christ. Christ Jesus was productive. And you must be productive. Don't tell me that uh, your life does not have results. If your life does not have results, you are neglecting the principle. Go and find out from people that have results. There is nothing wrong in not bringing yourself to find out people that have results. There is nothing wrong with that. Of course, can we see it's the ultimate measure for maturity or whatever? No. But let me tell you, as you journey, your path is supposed to be like a shining light. It must move brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. So you must be able to understand that you, as you journey with God, knowledge and understanding, you must come into revelation. What is God teaching you? God is God revealing to you. The revelation of God upon your life is very important. Right now we are entering into a new year. What has God revealed to you? What has God told you? What God told you matters more than anything anybody can tell you. There are times when doctors can look at you and tell you you are sick in your body. Yes, it's what they reported, right? You, what did the Lord tell you? What is the report of the Lord? You believe in their own report. That you believe in their own revelation. That is what was revealed to them. Maybe, maybe by because they diagnosed you, they put you in an instrument. This is what they see. You, what did you see? You must come to a point where your perceptions, what you see, are different from what other people see. Also, you must move to the realms of encounters. Encounter is so a key player. You see, many people like to be changed because of an encounter. I always say. Program don't change men. Only an encounter with God change men. Everybody that works with God takes very well. They are men of encounters. There must be a time in your life where you have encountered God. You must encounter God. An encounter with God is key in sustaining you in this life. I do not do the things I do just because I have passion for it. I do them because I have encountered God. You, the things you do is only upon the strength of encounter that you can survive for long. Revelation then encounters. What are your encounters? You see, revelation is a product of encounter. An encounter has better revelations. But either way, these things are intermingled. I get what I'm saying now. When was the last time the Lord encountered? When was the last time you have an encounter with God? Encounters don't have to be spectacular. You know, you want to see a church, you want to see a seraphim, you want to see an angel, Jesus has to appear to you. Know? An encounter oftentimes is an apocalypse, it's an unlock, it's, it's an opening of the veil. It can just come as a light upon your spirit. When was the last time you truly genuinely have an encounter? And of course, encounter can also be an encounter with an angel, an encounter with men, an encounter with elders. What the last time you have an encounter? Most of your dreams, your visions, your revelations, they are encounters. But you take them serious. Now is the time you must take this thing serious. Because God is speaking to you. You are not just taking it serious. And you are keeping wondering, Father, when will I see a vision? But you have a dream. A dream is also part of God speaking to you. Father, when will I have a dream? But you have a vision. Father, when will I have this? Many of us must be able to understand that. We must take serious our encounters in this season. What is the Lord saying to you? You must document them, you must write them down. Also, we must be able to move to the realm of the anointing. The anointing is important. Let nobody deceive you. Everybody does the things they do because there is a measure of an anointing of God upon their life. Then the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Acts 10, 38. With the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. When you start before the sick, you don't, you don't, you don't wish to, for them to be healed. When you stand before people, you don't wish for things to happen. By the anointing, you enforce it. You must be able to understand that in this season, in this time, you need the anointing. 
you need the anointing. It's part of the smelling of God. It's part of the way God enabled us. It's part of the way God helped us. It is almost impossible for you to effectively work with God without the anointing. Somehow the anointing is part of the system that God used to aid a man, to help a man, for a man to be able to thrive working with him. Also, you need to be able to join into the realms of the gift of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit are very important. Many of us are, are lacking in the gift of the Spirit, but these things are gift, given to us freely. You must be able to understand that when it comes to the gift of the Spirit, you must be able to desire them. Paul speaking in the book of Corinthians, he told them that... Um, I do not want you to be ignorant. I know you were gentiles carried away onto this. Don't I do even as you were led. But I want to speak unto you that nobody called nobody speaking by the Spirit, you know, called Jesus a cause. And nobody can say Jesus is not accepted by the Spirit. So you must be able to understand that when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, you must desire endlessly spiritual gifts. If you desire them, you will see them are working with life. Why? Because it's the same Holy Spirit that brings the gift. Is that true? So if you have the Holy Spirit and you don't have the gift, it's not because the Holy Ghost does not have the gift, but it's because you have not desired them. Because the Holy Spirit is out of you, but yet again, the gift is not manifesting in your life because you have not seen the need for them. But by the time you see the need for them and you begin to open yourself for them and understand their knowledge of how it works, will bring you to their manifestation. Do you know that it will shock and surprise that you are even manifesting the gift of the Spirit that I don't even know? Like, what happened in the Corinthian church? All of them were functioning the gift of the Spirit, they didn't know. When Paul came, Paul was not defining it to them. Now, okay, there's a gift called this, there's a gift called that, there's a gift called that. But they were working in it before he was even defined for them. So what I'm just trying to let you understand is you must be able to understand that the, the gift of the Spirit are a prime necessity in your life. And I'm telling the truth. See, there's nothing wrong with praying. Father, activate in me the gift of the Spirit. Or look for people that can activate it for you. Many more times people travel from meetings when they come and we we'll pray for them. A gift begins to work in their life. There's nothing wrong with that. Of course, it may not work permanently to work for a while, you know, but at least it will... It will, it will bring them to a point where they can believe that this thing can work in their life. Then they begin to join into it reality. So they must be able to covet and desire earnestly spiritual gifting because in this season and this time you need the gift of the Spirit. Also, you must desire the fruit of the Spirit. You must give expression to the fruit of the Spirit. Many of us are gifted and talented, but yet again, no any fruit of the Spirit are working in our life. Not because we don't have the Holy Ghost, but because we have not given it expression. You must permit the Spirit of the Lord to give expression to His fruit in your life. You must have genuine love for people. You must have kindness. You must have patience. You must put your life upon the parameters of Galatians. Take the fruit of the Spirit. Which one is not a work in your life and add them up into your life? Because in this new year, you must be able to walk according to the fruit of the Spirit. I know people hate you. I know people fight you. Be able to do the same. It's of necessity that you add up to yourself this virtue of the Spirit. You must also be able to love the way and the patterns of intercession. Many of us need to increase our intercession. Many of us are not interceding enough. Many of us have we have not seen, but we have seen the sin of prayerlessness. You must be able to wake up and begin to intercede. The reason why that bad thing happened in your family is because you are not interceding enough. The reason why that thing went wrong is because nobody is interceding. Intercession, intercessors actually preserve their the stability of this kingdom. This kingdom can only be able to drive upon the strength of intercessors. What are you, are you praying for right now? What nation are you praying for? What city are you praying for? What tribe are you praying for? Who are you praying for in your family? Many of us have siblings that are smoked and drunk up. We have family that is so disunited. We have our dad fight, our mom, our mom fight, our dad. All kinds of things goes on. And yet again, we don't see the need to pray. We see the need to complain. If you spend the time that you complain, praying, things might have changed by now. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. You must be able to understand that your responsibility in this kingdom is to intercede, is to to pray. The Bible is speaking saying, is anyone sick among you? Let him pray. If anyone, uh, 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 um, uh, if, if anybody is having an issue, let him pray. You see, it doesn't matter whatsoever that you are going to pray. Is applicable. So you must understand that this. You must increase your intercession. You must increase your intercession. You must increase your level of love for others and love for God. Many of us don't love God genuinely. Sincerely speaking, many of us don't love God genuinely. The reason why people bash life is because they don't love God. If you love God, you will remain there even in the midst of things not working. And this is a woman that loves her husband or loves her family very well, and yet again things are not working while she's still there. Sometimes marriages, marriage, many of our marriages today, they are just managing it. But you see that they are still married and they are still there. Why? Because they love each other. You must be able to understand that, you see, yes, it's true that God should actually be able to answer your prayer, do many of those things. But what if He doesn't? Yes, the question you ask, Apostle, why should God not answer your prayer? Well, God does not owe you anything. Not the truth. He can decide to answer, He can decide not to answer. It's part of His responsibility. Is that true? Yes. But are you doing your own responsibility? Because until you pray, nothing will happen. 
Nothing does happen just like that. You must do something. Most times we are not faithful in our own part of the bargain and we want God to just be faithful. God is always faithful. If nothing is working, it's not because God is wrong, it's because me and you are wrong. So we cannot blame God for our own irresponsibility. So you must be able to understand that in this season, you must awake unto increased level of love for God. You must love God genuinely, you must love others genuinely. Secondly, you must hold steadfast your concentration. Many people are no longer concentrated. But eventually God told you to be fasting once in a week. When was the last time you keep to that? You are stuck by now. See, this year is not year that you walk in disobedience. Obedience becomes better than sacrifice when the Lord demands for obedience. This time, if the Lord demands that you fast, fast. If He demands that you pray, pray. If the Lord demands you give, give. Don't walk in that disobedience. Many of us are no longer concentrated. Maybe the Lord gives you a concentration to finish one chapter per day. When is the last time you keep on doing it? You are not doing it. It's not about it. It's not about knowing the chapter. It's about God seeing you being obedient. Because when you walk with the Spirit, you must please the Spirit. How do you please the Spirit? By obeying the Spirit. Many of you are not pleasing the Lord. We just want fast food. You know, fast, 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 fast. People call me apostle. What are the ten ways to be anointed? I say there is not ten. There are multiple ways. And the problem is this. I can't be guaranteed that all of those ways will lead you to get be anointed. All I can say is that follow Jesus. What am I trying to say? Many of these shortcuts are looking for five ways to be anointed, three ways to make money. Five, you won't get it. It doesn't exist like that. If it is God, it's a journey. God will bring you to a point where you can trust you first. If God can't trust you with the anointing, He can't give it to you. If God can't trust you with power, He can't give it to you. All the fasting and prayer is to shift you from disobedience, from your wickedness, from your motive of the heart to a place where you are not, you are totally surrendered to God. Then God can commit it to you. See, let me tell you. Many people that do not pray about many things get those things. That is the sincere truth. Most of the people that pray and their heart is not checkmated, their heart, their motive is wrong, will never get anything. If you pray with the wrong motive, you are just wasting your time. Yes, you are really, really wasting your time. So your concentration also matters. Your concentration is what keeps you in accurate obedience to the Lord. When you are concentrated to the Lord, you will not leave your life loose anyhow. Right now, holiness is not part of our game. It's what we left for Kumuyi. We left it for deeper life. Why? Because we felt that we can still be, we can still be, um, we can still be a pastor and we are sleeping around. We can still be pastors and we are lying. We can still be pastors and we are messing up. We can still be pastors and manipulating people. We see all those things must stop because judgment is coming. You and I must be able to hold steadfast our concentration. Anytime a man breaks his concentration, death is in view. Check all the scripture. Anybody that breaks concentration died. If the Lord commands you to do something and if you disobey him, there is death applicable to you. You may not die physically, but you die spiritually. These are the reasons why crowns, crowns fall upon people's head. Many people are highly anointed, but I'm telling you today, they cannot trace an iota of any fiber of God in their life. Why? They have lived their life anyhow without concentration. The Bible said, in case of Samuel, is it case of Samson, that no strong dream should be taken and let no reason touch his head. The day that something touch his head, he loses his strength. What I'm trying to say is this. There are no strong men in this kingdom. All of us have been helped by God. I told you, many days ago, the Lord told me to be himself as. It's a man I help that is always better than a man that helps himself. And that's when I know that all this moving around here and there, looking for how to get so You are wasting your time. Stay with God to help you. If God does not help you, all you are moving from here to here will still be a waste of time. No matter if God is not in America. God is not in Nigeria. God is not in Dubai. God is in everywhere a man decides to trap him in. God is everywhere. You can see the manifested presence of God may not be everywhere. But let me tell you too. Who made the manifested presence of God every, in that place? It's because somebody trapped it there. If I come to where you are now, God will be there. If I go to Dubai, God will be in Dubai. If I go to US, God will be in US. If I go to America, God will be where they come. If I go to Ghana, God will be in Ghana. If I go to Sokoto, God will be in Sokoto. If I go to Lafia, God will be in Lafia. If I go to your village, God will be in the village. There is no specialty to any religion. It's just because people pay the price to trap God there. You too can do the same. You can bring God into that your house. If God is not in your house, because you are not responsible. If you are responsible enough, you can host God in your house. So your concentration is what hosts God. Men that are concentrated are men that are able to trap and host God. If you take all two scripture, before God comes, a pattern must be kept. When that pattern is kept, God will come. If you don't keep the pattern, God will not be found in your vicinity. You must be able to understand that until God is found within you, God cannot be found without you. You cannot be able to speak forth of God and God will hearken if God is not your friend. And how can you make God your friend? You dwell with him. You must dwell with God. Every true friend, eh, you communicate to dwell with each other. So your concentration keeps God as your friend all the time. 
You must also want to forgiveness as a virtue. Many of you don't forgive anybody. Many of you. Yes, they hurt me. Yes, they offend me. Yes, they do this. Yes, they do me. Yes, they stole this from me. And so what? Forgive them and let them go. You are forgiving people not because of themselves. You are forgiving them because of yourself. I live a life of love towards people. Yes, I may be busy, but let me tell you this. If you meet me, you know that I don't have anybody I have. Why would I be holding your heart? Are you important? It's not it's really it's not I don't think it's okay for a believer to really hold people at heart. You are making people too important. Why are they, they are not important? You should hold God in your heart, not hold people. How can you carry somebody for the next five years in your heart? And you have not been able to keep God for just two hours in your heart. You must be able to forgive people so that you can have accommodation to host God. Many people cannot keep God within them because they have kept so many things inside of them. You kept for Lake here, you kept Bumi here, you kept Donat here, you kept Israel here, you kept Philosophers here. You are angry with your mother, father, auntie, cousin, younger brother, younger. You are angry with somebody you met on Facebook, things, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. And you can't keep God because they have occupied every vacancy in your heart. You must let them go. When you forgive people, you create room for you to be able to accommodate God. When you forgive people, you create the strength to be able to do again, to be able to thrive again, to be able to reason right. Many of you, you are depressed today because you need to forgive people. Forgive those people and you'll be free from that depression. You'll be free from that depression. You'll be free from that offense. Forgiveness must be a virtue that you must hold daily in this season. And remind you, when you don't forgive others, God will not forgive you. God will never forgive somebody that doesn't forgive others. Also, there's a need for power. And I told you, Anytime I speak about power, it's prayer. We don't have an apology for the realms of power. You see, your, realm of, your lack of character is not the issue of prayerlessness. It's an issue of you not being born again. Many people that are not born again lack character. When you see a man that is powerful and is not having the character of God, it's because the person is not born again. Don't come and attach him to us, no. You can have power and still be a man of character. Jesus Christ has both power and character. Is that not true? Jesus Christ is a patama. So why would you only choose power and neglect character? It's because you are not fully transformed. When you are transformed to the image and the likeness of Christ Jesus, there will be power and there will be character. So this is not time for you to choose character and neglect power or choose power and neglect character. No. You can be a man of character and a man of power. It as a result of your transformation. Conformation to the fruit of the Spirit and to the what? To the, to the, to the, to the gift of the Spirit. So as you conform to the gift of the Spirit, you come into dimensions of the manifestations of the power of God. As you pray, you are activated into those functionalities. But as you conform to the fruit of the Spirit, giving the same Spirit that produces the fruit that produces the gift, you can conform to the character of God. What you call the character is also manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. Everything people say character is fruit of the Spirit. Then why would you have the Spirit of God and not manifest His fruit? It's because you have a default problem. Your problem is a default problem. It's not a character problem. How do you even do character? Tell me step one. Step one is what? You see, it doesn't even exist. Grow in God. Love the Lord. Know God. As you continue to grow in God, you continue to love the Lord, you continue to give expression to the fruit of the Spirit, continue to give expression to the dimensions and the attributes of God. You walk in character by default. There is no pattern to grow in character. Any man that knows God eh, should have character. But if you don't know God, you don't have it. And sometimes, you see, people walk in disobedience and their disobedience brings some attendant, all kinds of rubbish. Bring all kinds of manifestation of the fruits of the flesh or the works of the flesh. And these are the things that make them, we refer to them as men that do not have character. Lack of character is what we call the works of the flesh. When you see a man that does not have character, it's a man that walks in the flesh, please. It's not a man without character. It's a man that walks in the flesh. A man that has character is a man that walks in the spirit. So, when you tell me you, we should leave prayer and focus on character. What you are trying to let us understand is that we should leave pursuing God. Yes. And when we stop pursuing God, we walk in the flesh. A man without character is a man that walks in the flesh. A man with character is a man that walks in the spirit. You can walk in the spirit. You can have power. You can love God. You can also have character. So focus on power. Focus on your character. Develop those things in this life. Don't sleep with that lady as a pastor. Don't steal as a pastor. Don't lie as a pastor. Don't don't create problems. Don't make people enemies. Don't, don't hurt people as a pastor. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you are doing these things, you are not born again. You may be born again, but you are not fully transformed and conformed to the image of Christ. Also, in this season, work on your prayer life. You must work on your prayer. The manifestations of the sons of God is what the creation is waiting for. Not they are talking, not they are just around, not they are, not they are, not they are moving up and down here and there, here and there, making this friend. Yesterday, I was with Fulake. Yesterday, tomorrow, I will be with a Jumoke. Next, tomorrow, I will be here. Another day, I will be here. Most of you cannot sit down like this and just organize your life. 
you move from this person to this person, you come and disturb people every day. No. Spend time with God. If you must manifest, you must spend time with God. You must spend time. The secret place is what guarantees fruitfulness in a public place. Your secret life is what fuels the strength for your public life. When you don't have a secret life with God, you can't have a public life with God. The strength of our public life is our secret life with God. Any man that does not have a secret with God cannot have a secret. Cannot have a public life that is strong with God. And I always say, poopy don't make men. It's only cave and secret place that make men. It's what we do behind the scene that actually guarantee what we do at the scene. If you do not have any time spent with God behind the scene, when you come to the scene, you will just be a clown. Prayer. Work on your prayer life. This season, let your prayer life be consistent. Take prayer your lifestyle. Make prayer your lifestyle. Don't just pray today, don't pray tomorrow, pray today. No, no, no. You must make it a lifestyle. As you are in your office, you pray. As you are in the bathroom, you are praying. If you are in the kitchen, you are praying. If you are walking, you are praying. If you are flying, you are praying. If you are on the road, you are praying. Anywhere you are, you can pray. You can chip in prayer. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 5 minutes, 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 5 minutes. You can, you can infuse prayer in your day-to-day activity. Make prayer as part of things you do. Don't just only eat food. Pray also. Like I said, there are not any special times of prayer. Any time can be a time of prayer. There is no any law against prayer. Any law against prayer is permitted to be broken. Lord, prayer is a common denominator for every religion. Even idol worship and pray. If Jesus pray, you must pray. Part of the principle of Jesus is the principle of prayer. Is that okay? Jesus pray, you must also be able to pray. Also, in this season, work on your relationship. <coughs> work strongly on your relationship. Many people actually don't have good friends. Many people have bad friends. Any day you meet them, you steal. Any day you meet them, you commit fornication, commit adultery, you steal. Nobody can come and meet me and say, Philip, self and let's go and rob a bank. Why? Do I look like a bank robber? No. Anybody that meets me in this life, meet me within the area of my purpose, they come to contribute or they come, I either learn from them or they learn from me. You must work on your relationship. Work on your relationship. Have people that are mentoring you, have people you are mentoring. Don't just be like that. Having friends that you can't teach them anything, they can't even teach you anything. And what are you doing with them? You are wasting your time. And you think you are small. You are not small. You are old. You are very old. You are very old. You are an old woman. You are an old man. All of us are old. All these are here after. You don't have time. You don't have time. Work on your relationship. Have a profitable relationship. A relationship that adds value to you. People that teach you something. People that you can learn something from. Not people that damage you and destroy. Not people that make you to lie. Make you to steal. Make you to fornicate. Make you to do something bad. No. Have people that can help you grow in God. People that can help you grow a business. Grow um, grow a company. Grow your church. Grow your ministry. People that can help you become better in academics. Better in school. Or people that just surround your life and just waste money. Take you to be a parlor, Take you to to club, take you to all kinds of things. It's terrible. Work on your relationship. In this time, work on your relationship. And let me tell you, by the time you begin to work on yourself, work on your relationship, what happens is you begin to attract a different set of people. Very, very important. Then strongly again, work on um, your personal development. Personal development is key. Many people don't see the need to sit and work on himself. Oftentimes, when you see any great man, is a man that is responsible. His responsibility is in working himself. This is the year of responsibility. You must be very, very responsible. You must be very ready. When you feel sleep too much, I don't care if you like to work in the daytime or you work in the nighttime. Just ensure that at least putting up at least a minimum of five, six, seven, eight hours learning something. Learn something. Learn something in the area of your business, in the area of your college, in the area of your academics, in the area of anything you are doing. Learn something. Spend time reading a book. Spend time reading the Bible. Spend time listening to a podcast. Listen to a message. Listen to something. You cannot just be like that. No. Spend time learning something. Personal transformation is key. Anytime you want to make societal impact, make impact in your life, make impact in anything you do, you must be able to learn something. You must be able to learn. Learning unlocks your creativity. Many of you are into every realms of creativity. Yet again, you cannot create anything new because you are not learning something new. You must be able to learn something. Spend time learning something. Develop yourself personally. Spend time building yourself. Build certain areas that you think in your life that is not valuable. You can work on certain level of values in your life. It's very, very important and very important. Also, um, I want you to be able to um, uh, work strongly on your leadership, leadership skills. Many of you are good prayer warriors, you are not leaders. That's why you can't even lead yourself. A prayer warrior that cannot lead himself, cannot lead others. Many of you have callings upon your life. God has called you, you are serving in a ministry, you are serving in a place, or you have your own ministry, you have your own church, yet you cannot lead other people. 
The reason why you can't lead other people, you can't is because it's because you can't lead yourself. You must work strongly on your leadership. You must work strongly on your leadership. How does that happen? You study. Go and look for mentors. I advise uh, one of my leadership mentors is my my small mentor in my mother does that and also the best among them is John Maxwell. John Maxwell is key in leadership. There are many others. Go lay your hands on their materials, learn them, learn how to actually be able to lead other people and lead yourself. Many times you see people fail, not because anything, but because they cannot lead. Most organizations, most businesses, most corporations, most ministries, most churches fail. They can't even grow because of poor leadership. And because the leader is not building on himself. The leader that is busy every day doing nothing. How can he lead? He has not studied anything about leadership. He doesn't even know how to build a team. He doesn't even know how to be a department. Jesus Christ built a team. He had a team of people. Jesus Christ understands leadership. You can't study him. You'll be able to understand. Also, in this year, never do anything until it's commanded. Never do anything until the Lord commands you. Don't go about doing whatever you feel like doing. Not because you feel like doing it. No. Do the things that God has taught you to do. Be obedient to the instructions of God if you must try. Don't do anything because people are doing it. No. You can do what people are doing, but ensure that God gives you permission to do it also. Also, this is the year of expansion. This is the year where many people are going to be expanding. Expanding their businesses, expanding their ministry, expanding their churches, expanding their relationships, expanding. Expanding also means that many people are going to get married. Because when you leave your singleness to marry to, to what they call family, it means you are married. It means you have expanded. So this is the time where people are going to be expanding. You are going to get married. You are going to be added someone to one. You are going to enter profitable relationship. I mean, serious relationship that will lead you to marry. This is the season where many people are going to begin to, uh, many are going to get admission. Many are going to begin to expand in their life. They are going to begin to achieve certain goals. Many are going to start up that company. Many are going to just, many things are going to begin to shift in people's life. This is the season. Also, yeah, so this, I told you that this is also a season of intercession. Why? Right? Also, in understanding your leadership, you must be able to work on a team. This is a time for you to actually believe in those that believe in you. You must believe in yourself, you must believe in God, but you must also believe in people. This is time for you to be able to believe in people that believe in you. And let me tell you the truth, if you are working in anywhere, serving in any church, serving in any ministry, you must understand that as a leader, you have a responsibility to play. The number one responsibility to play as a leader is to offer service and to also offer your resources. Of course, many of you are partnered with different ministries. Now it's time for you to learn to offer more of your resources. Many of you are workers in many ministries. Now it's time for you to be able to offer more of your services. But as leaders, you must offer your service and your resources. Think more global. Think more global. Don't just think only U.S. No, you can reach the whole world from where you are. I get what I'm saying now. This live broadcast, many people are coming from different countries. Not because of anything. You can be able to do it. There's nothing we are doing here. You cannot be able to do it. See, I have never believed that there's something somebody is doing that I cannot do. I have never believed. I have never believed. I may not be able to do it as big as the person is doing, but I know I can also do it. The same way you can believe that anything anybody do, you can do it. Did the people, did the, did the, did the person have three heads? No, now you don't have two heads. Too. Is that okay now? You must be able to understand that the same way that God is working with others, God can also work with you. What God is doing with one, you mean God can do with all two. So you must be able to be serious, be very, very serious with your life, be very, very responsible. You cannot just be sleeping every day. No, you must wake up and get serious with your life. What is the area of your vision, the area of your passion? Begin to work on it and work on it seriously. Um, <coughs> In this season, in this time, only the strong and the great that will control the society. You must be part of the strong and part of the great. You must be part of the strong and part of the great. You must work towards becoming part of the strong by the help of God and part of the great by the help of God. Like I said, your secret life determines your public, your strength in the public. Your secret life in this season will determine your strength in the public. What are you doing secretly? Are you living a carnal life secretly? Are you a worker of iniquity secretly? Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Then begin to live a life of holiness, even your secret, so that I can guarantee you a life of success in the public place. If you don't have a secret life, you know, <coughs> that would be a challenge. Have a secret life with God. Also, you must walk towards the realm of power, which I told you the need for you to pray and pray effectively well in this season. Also, you must be able to be responsible, commit yourself to personal development. Commit yourself to working on yourself, adding more value to yourself. You need more value to yourself. You need to add more value to yourself. You must be serious with yourself. When we talk about value, most of the time we we'll give um, there's an illustration, a powerful illustration. For instance, we always say you have two hospitals, right? Let's say you have two hospitals. 
one of the hospital um, is run by an atheist, and this atheist doesn't believe in God. To make the matter worse, this atheist, the name of his church, the name of his hospital is um, God is Dead Hospital. And there's another pastor, he's a pastor, he's an apostle, he's a bishop. I mean, he has a very big church. But yet again, he has a private hospital also. But you see, this pastor, the name of his church, the name of his hospital is God Can Do It, or God Is Able Hospital. But yet there's an atheist that the name of his hospital is God is dead hospital. But this atheist, eh, if you check the history of his hospital, he has operated on about 20 people in the last one month. And all of them survived. None of them died. All kinds of situations. And here again you have this God is able pastor, doctor that has operated on just 10 people eh? and all of the 10 people died or let's say he has operated on the 20, 20 people and all 20 people died and now you need them to be operated upon or your mother needs to be operated upon or your father needs to be operated upon or your brother needs to be operated upon which of the hospital will you take your son to or your father I know I know that you are all unbelievers now because I know you will take your own son to God is dead hospital. Why? Because we are sure that God is dead hospital has value. And because of his resourcefulness, because of his credibility, because of his stability to produce results again and again, we are sure that if he can operate 20 people, none of them will die. Eh? It doesn't matter whether God is dead hospital. You will take the father there. But the other pastor that is not valuable enough, that can operate 10 people, none of them will die. You don't want to leak it. The same way, plane does not fly by prayer and fasting. No plane, no car move by prayer and fasting. There are principles that must be engaged. And the pilot must be competent enough. The pilot must know what he's doing. The driver must know what he's doing. If you enter a car or you enter a bus and the bus driver says, Well, I've never driven a bus before. I trust God that by prayer and fasting, I'm on a seven days prayer and fasting now. I trust God we arrive safely. You will drop down. Whether it's a pastor, if you are flying a plane, and the pilot give a shout out and he lets you understand that I've never flew a plane before. Although I'm on the seven days prayer and fasting, a dry fasting for that matter. But I'm a bishop. I have many branches of churches. I trust God will land safely. You will leave that plane. Why? Because you know that you don't trust his prayer and fasting. What am I trying to say? You must be valuable in this time. You must ensure that you work on yourself sufficiently well that you add value to yourself. Ensure that you commit yourself to personal development. Personal development increase your resourcefulness, increase your value. So you are worth listening to. If people give you five minutes, ten minutes, it's worth it. In your office, are you valuable? You want a promotion. Promotion for what? Are you that valuable enough? Many of you are more valuable than what you are being rewarded. So now is the time for you to demand for the promotion. But many of you are not really valuable like that. So you must be able to improve on yourself and add value to yourself so that you can be able to deliver. And your value is determined by your productivity. If you cannot be productive, you are not valuable. If you cannot produce, you are not valuable. So right now, it's not just about shibiri, 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 shibiri. You must be able to add value to yourself and be productive wherever you are. Productive in that ministry, productive in that church, productive in that organization, productive in that office place, productive in your family. You must be productive. It's very, very important. Is that okay now? Also, you must add up a lot to your quality of your prayer. And when I talk about quality of prayer, I'm talking about quantity of prayer. <clears throat> Is that okay? Many years ago, we focused on quantitative prayer. In fact, there was a time we took people to pray for 50 hours. 50 hours! <laughs> I've never seen, after this day, I've never prayed in corporate for that long, 50 hours. After we did that, 50, that was the only time I've ever done in my life. After we finished that 50 hours of prayer, nobody talked to anybody again. For almost three days, parents begin to call. What happened? Our children are sleeping for 24 hours, for 48 hours. You know the funny part? After that 50 hours of prayer, most of those people today are still vaccinated. Most of them are vaccinated. What am I trying to say? It's not about the quantity of the prayer, but the quality of the prayer. The quality. This year, focus on quality than quantity. Don't just say, we are praying there. We are praying there. We are the ones that pray. You will pray and pray and groan and cry and kill yourself. And yet, you will see backslide. Is the quality of the prayer. But if you can pray qualitative prayer for quantitative hours, you will get quantitative results. I know it's about the quality, but you see, if I come for your meeting, we will pray for long. 
But what I'm trying to let you understand is this. Don't just focus on the quantity and forget the quality. No. Don't just also focus on the quantity and forget the quality. It must be qualitative. The Bible says it's the effectual, continual, heart heart prayer of a righteous man that make a tremendous power available. Many of us are not righteous and we are praying. You see, you are wasting your time. Many of us, you see, we are not, you are, you are praying in tongues in disobedience. You are speaking in tongues after you are done 50 hours, you go to a boy house. When you are done singing, you now go to another boy house. When you are done like this, you go and masturbate. When you are done, you now go and watch pornography. When you are done, that's why all the hours of the prayer, we just look as if you are wasting your time. Your prayer must be qualitative in this season. Is that okay now? Focus on quality, not just on quantity. Also, you must be able to. Yeah, we'll soon move to the interactive session. Also, like I said, work on your relationship, add more knowledge to yourself. You must also be able to understand that if you do nothing about your life, you will die with a prophecy. Many people do not know that prophecy don't fulfill itself. People rise up to fulfill prophecy. All the dreams you are having, all the revelation, all the prophecy. See, it doesn't matter who has prophesied on your head. It will never come to pass until you rise up. In that greater is he that fulfills prophecy than he that prophesied. All these prophecies here and there, here and there, here and there. Somebody must fulfill it. Eh? The thing cannot just stand up and fulfill it. Somebody has to fulfill it. You must be the person to fulfill prophecy. Many years ago, the Lord told me, Philip Stephan, you are praying for a move. The move is you. If you cannot become the move, nothing will happen. Until I move, nothing will happen. If you don't move, God will not move. If you don't do anything, nothing will happen. When you are done dreaming, wake up and act the dream. If not, you will remain in the realm of dream. Nobody fulfill his dream dreaming. You wake up and you act it upon. You are serious about it. You saw this about your life. You saw that about your life. You will die with a dream. You will die with a vision. That was the cry of my small role. That the graveyard is filled with so many people that have so many dreams and visions. Yet, ideas they cannot actualize. Many of you have ideas of companies. People even follow your idea now. They are successful. You, you are still the way you are. I always say there are only two things that stop nonsense in this end. Only two things. Money and prayer. You don't have a good prayer life. You don't even have money. You tell me you are busy. Busy doing what? If you are truly busy, at least busy with busy. There's a business for this money. But you are busy, no money. You are not the richest man in your place. You are not even anything. No, we have to be serious with our life. This year we must be very responsible. Because all this serious approach, Bishop said, guarantee a glorious result. If you are not if you are not putting serious approach, your life will remain the way it is. It's not a joke. 2022 will come and pass, you will still remain like that. But you can do something about your life. By the time you rise up and become responsible in this year, with the help of God, things will shift in your life. No, see, start small. Start, start with that one member. Start with that two. Many people just want to, I, I laugh in Chinese. I, I'm one of the ministers that try to show my process to everybody. It's not because I want to show it's because I want the younger minister to have hope. Because sometimes when you look at the fathers, you just feel as if you are hopeless. We the Pope, bah! How many thousand capacity? Before you know it, uh, 300,000 capacity. Eh, what do you call it? 50,000 capacity. Dr. Paul, the next wake up, bam! 100,000 capacity. Now, his friend, a bam! 100,000 capacity. And you, you can't even guarantee 1,000 capacity. And now you feel that so you are a failure. You are not a failure. Those people started with one people or two people or three people. In fact, they suffered. And do you know the funny part? They didn't just dream about it. They walk towards it to achieve it. You, you are just dreaming. You are just imagining. You are just worried. When will you start working on it? Nobody starts just like that. Check the grassroots. Check the beginning of people. Everybody starts small. Start small. If I start on that mango tree, sometimes people reach me, people call me every day, apostle, we need money to build an auditorium. I say, we don't need to auditorium, we need people first. Ministry is not about the auditorium, ministry is about people. Five people can't even believe in you and want to build an auditorium to do what? I know one of my friends came into the city, he told me, God called him to come to Latvia. I said, no problem, he came to Latvia. When he came, he came and buy this instrument, buy that instrument, buy... That guy sold his car, bought every instrument, what millions. But do you know that nobody come for that church, nobody is coming to the church. On Sunday... I will be the one to call people. I will call some of my people who will go. My people who somebody is on drum, instrument, this and this and that and that. When I leave, everybody leave. Every Sunday you come, I want to, you know, go send those people again. I say, where will I be sent? Where, where will I keep on sending my people? Can't you go out and be responsible? 
What I'm trying to say is that you must come to a point where you are very responsible. He didn't want to sell those things. He didn't want to buy those instruments. If you spend the money developing yourself, improving yourself, you don't need a fine hall. You need people first. When the people are there, you cannot move to a hall. We have done meetings, gather on the ground, gather on that tree, mango tree. People gather to their numbers. What do you mean by going to you want this hall? Somebody told me you want to be a meeting that you need to rent a hall of how much I say for what? For what? Do for the one that you can do. You don't need to borrow here, borrow here, borrow here, borrow here. Then when you have done borrowing, borrowing, the meeting has finished, now you're under pressure. You start calling this minister, calling this one, calling this one, calling another one guy that went and did one meeting. What I mean, so he was calling me the apostle that are bees we need to pay. Apostle, please send me some money. I said, Did I send you? I'm not even part of the guests you invited. You didn't even consult me before. You just borrow, borrow here. Be careful. Do at your own level. At every level you are, there is a minister that you can invite and you can honor. At every level you are, there is a hall you can get. Don't put pressure upon your life. When you start putting too much pressure on your life, you see, you can't recover from it. You will not only have high blood pressure, you will have hyper high blood pressure. In fact, you have not only blood pressure, you will have water pressure, you will have what you, you have every pressure. Be careful. Don't put too much pressure in your life. Okay now, start small. Don't be afraid to start small. Don't be ashamed to start small. Start from where you are. Everybody started from somewhere. Nobody just come to the top like that. You start from the ladder. The, see, every ladder has a starting point. Every mountain has a place you put one step at a time. You must put that one step. Don't come and try to jump up there. Bishop did not stand like that. The do doctor, Dr. Paul didn't stand like that. Alamed didn't stand like that. Simon didn't stand like that. All of them start from somewhere. Every, I didn't start like this. I started from somewhere. You must start from somewhere. Don't just see us and desire the glory you just see today. It's a lie. Sometimes you go and somebody say, Apostle, transform all the dimension you have upon me. There was a time I can't even pray for two minutes. But there was a time I was smoking and drinking. There was a time I was in minus. There was a time I can't even speak like that. There was a time there was always a time for that was nothing. You are at a point where we were before, but we did something about it. If you do nothing about your life, that's my point. Your life will remain the way it is. You must get serious. Go, get materials, get messages, get books, begin to study, lock yourself inside. All this moving here, moving there, playing game, playing this, sleeping around, doing this, this, you are wasting your time. Spend the time investing in yourself. And I'm assuring you, you see, people that invest in themselves become a valuable asset that the world cannot reward them. The world can't reward men of value. There is no system designed to reward men of value enough. Somebody can see you and give you 10 naira, and that person will give you billions. The value is according to perception. That's how it works. The same way that as I'm talking to you right now, there is no any system designed to reward people that are not productive. If you are not productive, they sack you. Get serious with your life. Don't go with a prophecy. Don't go with a revelation. I have the prophecy. I have the revelation. No, go and walk towards it. Is that okay now? Also, let to save yourself if you cannot save others. You see, don't lose your salvation. Many people, many people are going to backslide. Don't backslide. Even if you cannot win other people, don't backslide. Don't backslide. Make a commitment to love God more. In this season, this year, ensure you make a commitment to love God more. Ensure you stop some bad habit. Don't just travel with your former bad habit to this habit. No, to this year, no. Stop some bad habit. If you have an addiction, if you have a character issue, solve it. In fact, I'm one of the ministers that I preach on almost every kind of addiction. There's nothing I've not talked about that you can break out from any addiction. I have seen thousands of people break out of every kind of addiction, whether it's masturbation, whether it's gaze, whether I've seen lesbians change, I've seen gays change. I have seen fornicators and doctors. I have seen you can break out of any kind of addiction. Any addiction you can break out from it. If you only take out time to study diligently, to obey the principle laid down, you will break out of it. God is willing to help you. Are you willing to help yourself? Also, work on your finances. I say two things stop nonsense money and what prayer. You must work on your finances. Let me tell you the truth. One of the reasons why to today I can draw me to another color of is because God has blessed me. I may not have the abundance, eh? but God has blessed me. I don't need to beg anybody. You can do things. When I see pastor today, I do on honorarium, I do on this, fight this one, fight that one, I do on money, I do on this, manipulate people, steal money. It pains me because, you see, an athlete minister is blessed. God has a way of blessing ministers. I'm telling you the truth. You know, you know, every minister is blessed. It's a lie. Every minister is blessed. Every minister that truly obey God is blessed. But anybody that is working fully in his purpose will be blessed. You are blessed by God. So, you see, you may not have the abundance. What I'm trying to say is that you can have 1 billion, you want 10 billion. You can have 10 billion, you want 20 billion. See, because one thing about vanity is that it doesn't have an end. 
No matter the amount of money you have today is not enough. You always want more. But if it's the one for you to live and survive daily, you have it. I get what I'm saying now. So work on your finances. If you have finances, you see money will reduce your prayer point and increase your prayer life. By the time you have certain level of money, you see you can pay by default. You can eat well. All this fighting here, fighting there. Most issues we have at home is because sometimes there is just nothing at home. Please, work on your finances. And anytime money comes to your hand, it's favor and a value. And most of you have to start up a business. Don't be ashamed of it. Even if it's pure water, go and sell it. It's better you do something that brings you one, one dollar per day. And that you go begging for one dollar every day. Yes. It's better you do something that brings you one, one naira per day than begging somebody for one naira every day. There's no dignity in begging. Learn to work on yourself. Learn to work on your finances. Is that okay now? There are many things you can do. There are many online opportunities. There are many physical work. There are many, there are many things you can do. Begin to study on that. Also, learn management. Also, learn to manage your finance. You know, many times, uh, no amount will ever be enough if you are poor in management. If you cannot manage your finance, no amount will be enough. You must learn to know how money comes, how you can multiply it. Okay now. Like I said, work on your prayer life. Work on your spiritual security. Work on your spiritual growth. Then take steps to start. Take steps to expand. Take steps to increase. There is no future for anyone that is not help of God in this season. All of us are a product of the help of God. I told you. All these things I'm saying, the help of God is not just a code. It's my life. When you see me see a man God help is only better than a man that help himself. It's not a quote. This that one is that one is my own testimony. The testimony of my life. I'm part of the minister that I know people don't like me. Forget. But even you people don't like you. Don't ask people like you. An average person is selfish. Don't teach people like you. People don't like you. Maybe they like the things you do. Yeah. Okay. I will do the next five minutes. People only like the things you do. They don't like you. That's the truth. So you must be able to understand your security is how much God can help you. If God can help you, people don't need to like you, but they will need you. In that office, they will need you. When they want to sack you, even if they don't like you, they will keep you. In that church, in that ministry, in that organization, in everything. Your husband can need you, your wife can need you. Okay, now. Also, uh, your testimony, like I always say, will be incomplete if God factor is not there. Don't get too used to the kisses of men. Why? Because after the kisses of men, I wait their betrayal. There's going to be a high level of betrayal in this year. Many people are going to betray people. Many of you have promise of marriage is going to fail, not because of anything. Sometimes it's deliverance in disguise. But that's the thing that people are going to leave your ministry, people are going to leave your association, people are going to leave your tribe, people are going to leave you. It's okay, let them go. Okay, get used to people leaving you as they leave you, others will come. It's just the normal way of life. And every promise of God has a time factor attached to it, prayer facilitated. And that factor uh, that is facilitated also facilitates the promise. You must understand that prayer will reduce the time of manifestation. So that it doesn't get eliminated. Okay. Also, you must understand that a mantus yet to get repeated. In the realm of the spirit, there are diverse mantus in the spirit. Okay. By the time you begin to journey through prayer, you come into the possibility of this mantus and you begin to function in there. There are availability for everyone in the spirit. So I sense in this season, many people are going to come into limelight. 2022 is going to be a year for the launching of many people, many apostolic voices, many psalmists, many new prophetic voices will be launched out. So many people are going to begin to give you, be giving visibility. God is going to begin to launch many people into ministry. Many people are going to be giving voice and influence in this season. So in this new year, many of you have been awaiting. You have been in process. You have been in school. You have been in, in the tall time of uh, uh, awaiting process with the Lord. God is going to begin to give you, uh, uh, bring you to the point of manifestation. There's going to be manifestation. There's going to be manifestation. There's going to be visibility. There's going to be influence. God is going to begin to launch. God is going to go. God is going to begin to give you a voice even among his people. God is going to begin to command the world to hear you in this season. Because I see many people being released. I see many new apostolic voices, many new prophetic voices. You see, nobody has a monopoly in this kingdom. The state doesn't belong to anybody. The state is only, you see, uh, the, the state eh, is for only those that are prepared for it. The crown will only feed the head that is prepared for it. The head that fit it. So you must be able to understand that I see the Lord releasing many apostolic voices. Many people are going to be released as new apostolic voices to occupy vacuums that have been created. The strength of the former voices is getting down. So God is beginning to release new apostolic voices. God is beginning to release new prophetic voices to occupy vacuums in the spirit. Because the, pure, the purity of the texture 
of the calling of God can only be maintained by selfless apostolic and prophetic voices. So God is releasing new pastoral voices, new evangelistic voices, new new teachers, new apostolic voices. So many of you are going to begin to come into full fledged of the manifestations of the callings and the purpose of God upon your life. And I see God giving new appointments to people, new appointments, new appointments, new appointments, and new visitation. These new visitations that God is creating upon people is to bring them to a point of manifestation in this season. The Lord spent you, the Lord keep you, the Lord guide you. Can you pray one minute and ask the Lord and say, Father, help me. Then we'll go into the session. As you pray, any question, um, I want to document it so that we get to take it right now. Yes. Um, in the name of Jesus. I mean, anybody that has, if you tell them that anybody has a question, should chat us so that we'll meet only that person. God is come as, once we just want meet them, everybody, okay. they are available. So they uh, share the link on Twitter. Uh, okay, um, the, uh, we have a challenge. Um, um, I think the links, people are trooping so many. So we have also scammers coming into the platform. It's okay. Linked to Twitter. So that the, it is linked to Twitter. So what we are going to do is we can't unmute everybody. Is that okay? So if you have a question, can you chat? Is it admin? Yes, chat it on chat. the chat box. Okay, chat it on the chat box. So they will omit only you. If you want to speak, chat the chat they will omit only you so that you can speak. Is that okay? Or is your target? Yes, what if a scammer? What if a, a scammer chat you now do that? We know. Okay, you do right. Yeah. Okay, so we also are using alien web. So alien web can also hack you. So we hack you also. Yeah. So you must be able to understand that. Okay, if you have a question, please chat it on the chat box. So do not we be able to unmute you so that you can speak, so we can hear you. Because if we unmute everybody, it's going to be random. Second, I think scammers and uh, hackers are just trying to do all kinds of things. It's always like that. We do something that we only do for people that are doing that. So can you ask your question now? Okay, before I make declaration upon you, and that's all. Or should I decree before we go on the question session? Before we go on the question session, right? So yes, uh, the interactive session now. Okay. Who is ready? I'm waiting. You are waiting? Did you even hear me? Are we, are we on? Yes. Somebody, did they hear me? Okay. So, yeah, we'll, 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 we
That's where we do not. This is what is going to me, but anyway, we don't see this now. Can you come to your own time for me now? No, I don't think it's working. I think it's one time. Yeah, I can hear you, I can hear you. Why are you talking about that? Okay, okay. You can hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, I can hear. My question is in the area of fasting. Um, I hear dry a lot. Is dry fasting meaning um, without food and water or just without food? Okay. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I think you're muted. Uh, Donald, you're muted. Okay. Uh, what the host is not allowing participants to unmute themselves. Are we now host? Are we now participants? Yes. Ah, let's you. Yes, let me let me tell Osan. I think the food is back for him to be host. Because if you allow your words on me now, those guys will come back. So you should make me your words to back. Okay, fine. Is this done? Not the same, we should we'll broadcast the video that we recorded so that they can forget about that. Let's focus on getting with the meeting first, no man. So are, we, are we active? I don't know what's going on. We're active, just now you make news. Reduce the function of the measure Are we still on? Hey, we well, are no, but they didn't remove me from being the host. So, yeah. Yes, let me talk to someone. Hello? Hey, oh. Yes, I, I cannot even unmute because you know I set it at the first place so that everybody cannot unmute themselves. But now I don't know how she's the host, so she's the one to make me a host. Internet. Exactly. So I'm trying to speak with her to make me a, a host. Okay, hi, I'm sorry, 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 i are we, are we okay? Yeah. If I get, can she see us again? She, okay, she can ask again. Okay, I have to unmute her. Yes. <coughs> because I need to be able to. She was talking about something like dry fasting. Yes. Let me. What's the difference between wet and dry fasting? No, the difference between wet and dry fasting? Yes. Okay. <coughs> uh, biblically, there is really this idea of fasting is fasting in scripture. That's the funny thing. Mm. You never see dry fasting, wet fasting. I don't even know where people get that. Is it an English word? Is there something like that in English? Mm. And there's nothing like dry fasting or wet fasting, even in English. So even publicly, there's nothing like dry fasting or wet fasting. Of course, it's what we coin out. You, know, you must be able to understand what are the, we call the philosophies of men. But, of course, it works. You get what I'm saying now. So, the idea of dry fasting is uh, when somebody did not eat anything at all. Like, no fluid, no fluid, no food, no fruit. You know, totally for the number of days. Then people refer to dry fasting as uh, when you do the normal 24 hours. The normal fasting is uh, 12 hours, right? Normally fasting is 12 hours. 
But when you look at biblical contest, actually, a day is 12 hours. You know, evening is evening. Um, it's just like um, like uh, 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 when you are. I don't want to say if you are going to a prison, but the way the prison jail centers work, evening, uh, morning. You know, 12 hours is a day. Another 12 hours is a day. So what I'm trying to say is this. The contest of dry fasting is when somebody does not eat for like 24 hours. So that's when somebody say is doing dry fasting. And the person does not eat, the person does not drink, you know, the person does not touch anything, you eat anything at all. So when they talk about wet fasting, is when they permit you to take fluid. Maybe you take fluid, but you don't eat maybe anything cooked. Okay? So, but those concepts of, uh, is not really biblical, sincerely speaking. Whether dry fasting or wet fasting. What I would advise is fast as you are led by the Spirit of God. Someone like me, I remember one time that I'm fasting at night. There are times when God can tell you to fast at night. Yes, God can tell you to fast at night. Like not eat anything from let's see, six, from six, your fasting starts from 6 p.m. You, you start from 6 p.m. to the next morning before you can eat something. Because the challenge is these people can't control themselves. People are always putting something in their mouth, putting something in their mouth. So, you know, fasting brings you certain, there's a level of devotion it brings to you. You know, so you abstain from physical things so that you can be able to uh, stop your spirit. So, fasting kind of um, uh, 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 abstain you from any physical thing that can distract so that you can be able to stop your spirit. So, in the context of fasting, biblically, is abstaining from anything. It can be food. It can be an activity, it can be a lifestyle, it can be anything. But if you abstain from your wife for a while, you are fasting. So the concept of fasting in scripture is abstaining so that you can devote yourself to God. So, but oftentimes when people abstain from something and devote to God, you know, they actually deny themselves that right. So it makes them to die naturally. Like, die, sorry, it makes them to die in their, in their desire. So the Bible says, Although the outer man perish, but the inner man is renewed day by day. So fasting, it kind of silence the desires of the flesh. So maybe what maybe you like to watch a movie a lot. So you can say, okay, I'm fasting from watching a movie. Is that why I dry fasting or wet fasting now? You say even if you don't watch the movie for the next for the next 24 hours, is that a wet or dry fasting? So when you bring the context of wet or dry fasting and you're trying to make it spiritual, it doesn't really fit in. Why? Because the concept of fighting, uh, fasting itself as a principle that Jesus Christ engaged has nothing to do, you know, with only the kind of food you are thinking about. I get what I'm saying now. So, but, bringing it to our today's society, many people said, Diane is a doctor. Is it Diane? Diane, I think doctors are here. It's not healthy. I don't advise, let me tell you the truth. I don't advise anybody. I don't advise. Take us to Christ's from Genesis to Revelation, only Jesus Christ, then we again, Moses, I didn't like that, that fasted for 40 days, right? That 40 days and 40 nights we are saying. That's what you call fast, uh, dry fasting. Because they stay day and night. Because if they only fasted for day, that means they will eat at night, right? So only Jesus Christ and only Moses, and, and all of them did it only once. It was never done again. I get what I'm saying now. I know the reason I'm saying this. I know the reason I'm saying this. In the priority, the first thing is the word of God. After the word of God, you go to prayer. After prayer, you go to fasting. Somebody can be fasting and is not studying the word of God. And is not also praying. And he intends to get results. You'll be a this. You see, somebody cannot be doing the word, word, and is not fasting and not praying. You see, you don't become a theologian. So you must be able to understand that in this thing, eh, the balance there is simple. Most of the people that did all these 40 days fasting, they were instructed to do it, number one. Number two, God intentionally told Moses, come up on the mountain and dwell with me. And God kept him for that long. Jesus Christ also was instructed. So if you must do dry fasting, I want to abstain from food and abstain from water. Eh? You must ensure that you are commanded by Jesus so that you don't kill yourself and say it's God that killed you. Like that prophet in Nigeria that went and entered zoo and said he's dying of our time. I'm telling you today, lions ate him. Jesus was glorified and he went to heaven. What I'm trying to let you understand, I have seen people that engage in trying to do 40 days dry fasting. Eh? He died. Many have health issues that is really they can't recover from. You can pray for 100 days, keep on praying, nothing will do to you, nothing will happen. 
You can read the Bible till you die, no problem. But you see, fasting has a limit. Fasting has a limit. It has a limit. And fast as instructed by God. If God say, abstain from food, abstain from water, He will give you the number of days. Maybe highest, seven days, four days, ten days, five days. And that if He instructs you. Don't just go and do because the year I was doing. I have fasted a whole year before every day. I have fasted a whole session. I can't count the number of days. Today, I keep fast. Weeks past, I keep on fasting. I have done all of those fasting. But you see, sometimes you don't build doctrine on these things. Somebody here might say that because I say I fasted a whole year, into donut, my PA fasted a whole year. Donut fasted a whole year. Donut done a whole year. I have not died. In fact, when, when he had, what they call it, is it also? Donut had also. He told me, Papa had also. I said, Go and fast. Don't stop until the ulcer die. The things continue for one year. The ulcer die. You see? But you see, I can't give that counsel to everybody. When somebody tells me you have ulcer, I say, you can stop. Let me pray for you. I had ulcer. I fasted. The ulcer disappeared. But what I'm trying to let you understand, you can't beat a doctrine out of it. So because here somebody did five days dry fasting, you may do it and you won't see Jesus. Somebody called me and said, Apostle, I'm fasting who have not seen Jesus. So I said, oh God, break the fast. Eat your food. In fact, buy chicken, buy Hollandia, buy... Fried rice, eat very well, then pray, then study the Bible. Maybe you will see Jesus when you are eating food. Me, I see him when I'm starving. Not everybody is called to be Elijah of our time that will go and stay in the mountain and mountain. Not everybody. Somebody saw that went to the mountain, he went to the mountain. When mosquitoes put the person, he saw snakes, he saw ants, he saw this, he ran away. See, please, you can stay where you are and you can engage a protocol that can guarantee this one. So you don't have to do what we did. Up to scripture, I don't know whether Paul did 40 days and 40 nights fasting and prayer too. No, I don't, I don't know why other apostles did. But you don't need to do dry fasting. If you must do it, do it as instructed by the Lord. Why? Because biblically, there's nothing like dry fasting. There's only fasting. Esther said, let everybody abstain from food. Is that okay? Daniel, I think they, they fasted from what? I think their fast was only vegetables. Only vegetables. So, you can decide to fast and say, I'm not going to eat beef meat again. I'm not going to eat Indomie again. I'm not going to eat um, rice again. And let me tell you, I observe that most time when people fast, they abstain from what seems to be a loss to them. I have a friend. I don't know whether it's connected. That guy will tell me he's doing retreat. Do you know what he will do? He will pack season movies. He will pack Game of Thrones. Those Susie movies will keep him active for, for the next three days and his inside. He will not go out, though, but he will not be praying. He will not be reading the Bible. He will not eat food, but he's watching Game of Thrones. Is that what fasting? In fact, I would have preferred him to be eating chicken and eating fried rice and he's not watching movie and he's praying. Because fasting is abstaining from a loss. Abstaining from a loss. A loss. There are people that naturally don't even eat food like that. So even if they are not even fasting, they are not even eating food. Are they fasting? No, now. So, what I need to understand the concept of fasting eh, is to actually starve your flesh and it's lost so that you can stop your spirit. So, although the outer man perish, the inner man is renewed. So, when a man is fasting, he's not just doing hunger strike. No, he's making contact. That is, you see, the Bible said, the Bible said that, you know, although they were in the wilderness, eh, but there was water for them to drink in the wilderness. So when you are fasting, you are like in the wilderness, but yet again, there is water for you to drink in the wilderness. So when a man is fasting, he's being fed spiritual things. So even if you are fasting, if you are truly fasting, you discover you are not even feeling hungry. You may feel for some time, but you get used to it. But the day that you are not fasting, you start getting hungry. And some people, the day that they are not fasting, is the day that they are not hungry. But the day they are fasting, they are hungry. You own there is an attack. So you ensure that you fast more until you become your lifestyle. When fasting becomes your lifestyle, it will be a challenge. So whether you are, whether you do not eat for the whole of the day between four hours, you call it a dry fast. Whether you eat, you call it a wet fast. I get what I'm saying now, but it's not really biblical. It's just, maybe it's a doctor language. Maybe it's a health language. You know, you know. I'm a biochemist, so there are times we say we should do fasting, blood glucose, twelve. I don't know all of those things. So, but I bet you is um, doctor's language. And I learned that it's not even good to continue dry fasting for long, which that dry fasting I say. Because your body needs nutrients. Your spirit needs your body. Your body needs your soul. They need themselves. Is that okay now? I am saying this because I suffer from this. We used to fast and eat pepper. 
We will farm and then break the garlic. We do that for years until I begin to have health issues. The Lord told me, Philip, this one is your own. It is you. It's not me. It's you. Of course, I get power. I became powerful. But you see, I had to learn consciously to begin to change that. And right now, today, I'm finding it very hard to eat food very well. Why? Because I have put myself in passing protocol that's for me. And the problem is that any person that fast like that, I'll tell you, you now have pot belly. Because all, everything that could not be processed well, later on, it will not come up with me. So please, apply wisdom. I get what I'm saying now. Fast as commanded, fast as instructed by the Lord. Whether it's abstaining from fruit, abstaining from fruit, abstaining from uh, food itself, abstaining from anything, please, eh, you can do it as commanded, as instructed by the Lord. Is that okay now? And all of them are potent. That idea of dry fasting is more powerful than wet fasting. My right dear, somebody was masturbating and sleeping around. I told him, we told him to do dry fasting. The person did seven days dry in fact, he was doing seven days dry fasting on the sixth day. Eh? He still watched pornography. In fact, I don't know where he got the strength to even sleep with a woman on the sixth day. So, what is the powerful there? Most people can be powerfully doing dry fasting and yet again, they are carnal. Is that okay now? So do every spiritual exercise as commanded by God, as instructed by God. Don't just do it because somebody is doing it. Or do it to prove a point. That's the reason people are praying to prove a point today. Nobody will reward you for proving a point for anything. Is that okay now? Yes. Okay. Um, this question is from Joshua Safo. Okay. said, what is your take on the future of the church in Africa? And what areas must be of concern to the church today? <coughs> and how will the church become more relevant in times to come? Okay, Joshua. Um, <coughs> you know, when I, when I want to answer this question, I will be biased a little bit. And the reason why I'm biased is not because of anything, but it's because of how it is. Is that okay? Uh, if you study the history of the church, you discover that we are in a time where Africa is now the center of the operation of God. Sorry, I apologize for all the US, brother, UK, of the affairs of God right now. I think I put a message, Africa and Nigeria in prophecy. Nigeria, strategically, Nigeria strategically in Africa eh, is the bedrock of revival in the modern day Christianity right now. Christianity right now is going to be heralded upon the strength of the sacrifice of Africa and Nigeria precisely. Nigeria will be the igniter of this. If you check very well, you know, the prophecy of people like Baetim, Beotin, and all, go and study the prophecy in keeping to Africa and Christianity. You understand what I was saying? It's not anything. You see, Nigeria, we ignite the revival, take it up to the other Western, um, take it up to the other uh, West African countries. Then from then, it will not enter South Africa. From South Africa, it will not shoot to other parts of African countries. Then it will not be taken to all of the whole world. It began from Europe, moved to US, you know. From US, it moved to America, it moved to um, Africa. In Africa, it was citadel in Nigeria. I get what I'm saying now. So right now, still now again, the pure apostolic and prophetic culture of ministry, of kingdom government and infiltration is in Africa. And everybody that's going to make impact in all of those other regions must either have a foot in Africa, mentor by an African, I get what I'm saying now, school or trained by an African, or have something to do with affiliation with Africa. Because our fathers from the Western nation. The European nation, they have actually sold it as a bad right to Africa. And right now, God is hoping, God is upon the time, like in the case of Simon of Cyrene, where a man and Joseph of Arimathias that have to come to be able to now shoulder the responsibility of seeing that the promises of the kingdom is actualized. Because right now, in a time where Christianity has been perverted, Christianity has been replaced, many things have changed. All the Asia Minor, you know, are Islamic stronghold center. Every region has been conquered except Africa and Nigeria strategically. And you can never see, like in history, in time past, as it is right now, where there is a revival going on in Africa, strategically in Nigeria, where younger apostolic and prophetic voices are rising. We are young children, I mean the prophecy of Joel is for faith, that the Spirit is poured upon all flesh, and sons and daughters, they are prophesied. So, somehow there is an outpouring of the Spirit of God in Nigeria, in Africa, globally, which is now being becoming an avalanche of a revival that will be taken to the whole world. 
Right now in the Western nation, the fathers know the Lord, the children don't know the Lord. Why? Because the fathers, what the fathers are supposed to do, you know, they were not careful enough in mentoring the younger generation. So the oppressions of God left the fathers and it moved to the younger generation in Africa. And now the younger generation in Africa are taking the revival, but now God wants them to take it to the whole world. And that's why African men, African ministers, African churches are giving influence beyond Africa. Why? Because God intends that Africa become the trigger to take it to the whole world. And so when you talk about the future, the future is revival and igniting the nation, revolutionizing the whole world and bringing them back to true apostolic and prophetic culture of kingdom ministries and patterns of seeking God. So one of the focus we must focus on number one is accuracy. Africa has been known for traditionalism. Africa has been known for perversion, corruption, and all these things. Africa has been known for so much of it. Right now, we need to be able to restore accuracy among our churches. We must be able to restore holiness. We must be able to restore holiness. As we restore accuracy, we must restore holiness and restore integrity. That integrity to be uh, 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 men and women that live right according to God's standard. Then we must be able to restore unity. Unity. Africa is not united. Africa is one of the continents that is so is never united. It's never united. And it can be seen from the disunity from the home. The families in Africa are so disunited. You see, we are just surviving because of our traditional culture. In Africa, people can remain unmarried. People can remain divorced and stay they are married together. It's funny enough. So you must be able to understand the same way in Africa people do as if they don't like themselves. Churches are divided. Everything is divided. I know it's a global thing, but Africa where God is sitting there now to be able to bring this around, we must be united. We must focus on things that unite us, other things that divide us. There are so many kinds of doctrines splitting out here and there from Africa. So we must be careful to unite ourselves. Find a common factor that unites us so that we can be able to release this global impact and global innovation. Then also, you know, um, we must focus on prayer because what we need now is what we call the realm of reality. You see, there is no thing, there is nothing you are saying now that I'm not going to preach. God has studied the writings of people like Watchman Lee and all these Western fathers. There is all these Godfathers that lived before. All these revivalists that lived before. You see, those people did almost every miracle, science and wonder. Not that it wasn't consolidated effectively well. So there is nothing that you intend to really do now that most times they have not really, really done it before. So what we ought to do, you know, is to focus on the realm of reality. Because Africa, we know too much, we manifest less. Only few people actually do the manifestation. So we must focus more on prayer also so that we can be able to bring everybody into that manifestation. That activation that they can be sent to diverse nations to be able to revive the nation again. To be able to revive and bring them onto full-fledged manifestations on the purpose and the dimensions of the operations of God. Also, we must be able to be careful of greed. Africa is a nation taken up by greed. We must be careful of greed. Our greed has bring us to dumbness. We must be careful of greed. Let's focus on kingdom impact. Let's focus on kingdom advancement. Let's focus on seeing that the plan and the purpose of God advance beyond our, beyond, beyond, beyond our intentions. Everybody is so ambitious in Africa. Your ambition is good, but you see, the kingdom of God is what will last. Your church will not be remembered. Your ministry will not be remembered. It's kingdom that will be remembered at last. So you must be able to ensure that we focus more on the kingdom rather than on ambition and our greed, our loss, our desire for the fame, our loss and our desire for our ministry to be known. And all of that. Those things are good, but do not neglect the place of kingdom. Understand that kingdom. That kingdom speaks about being able to be there for your brother, being able to do things that nobody can reward you for. If, you, if there is no payment for you, you will not do it. If there is no payment for you, no, 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 you must focus on kingdom. Sometimes the kingdom demands that you sow into it, that you make certain level of sacrifice and giving to it. And until you cannot do that, we may not have a future in Africa. It will shift again to another continent. But by the mercy of God, so far so good, you see, Africa is sitting as the shoulder to be able to host this current revival that is coming. You know, and that is why you can see young men and women on fire for God in Africa, young men and women burning for God in Africa, but there is an attack. That attack is the attack of perversion, attack of immorality, to pervert all the voices. To actually, one thing I didn't say is that this year, many ministers are going to fall by scandals again. 
Many people have done it with perverted. There are many things that have done happen because I see a lot of marine spirit and many occultic people release out there to pervert the scent. So you must be careful. You must be willing to turn your back at any offer that looks anything that doesn't look like the kingdom. Okay? So we must be able to be careful in Africa. So this I think I have answered it in a few words to let you understand. I don't know whether uh, what clarification do you want again? Um another question okay. from Gertan. So he's trying to understand how that he has he, he has many he has many dreams without sees continuous dreams about the future and sometimes spiritual encounters but he's not understanding them until they happen so you just come and see them happen and he realizes that he has had the dream before okay your problem is knowledge <coughs> your problem is knowledge okay uh, i i wrote a book dream interpretation there's a book dream interpretation there's also a book the prophetic ambition which i talk about the dream world go and study it you will understand how dream works you see when you dream and you don't remember there are many things involved Number one, you don't document it. See, as I am here, see books here, yes, see things. You are not documenting. You must be able to document. Many of you are not good in documenting and journaling your dreams. All the things you read in Bible, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, the, most of them are dreams and visions and revelations God gives people. If they didn't document it, would you have it? No. So they documented these things. God, God speaks to you through dreams. Eh? Get a book. Write it in my dream book and be writing every other thing. It doesn't need to make sense, just be writing them down. When you write them down, you take them serious. You now begin to pray about them. But anytime you have a dream and you don't pray about it, it will come to happen. Right? Because you do nothing about it. That's what I'm telling you. When God shows you something, it's because God knows that you can either change it or fast track it. So what it means is you can either, uh, 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 you are going to either pray for it or against it. So by the time you are having dreams and you know, it just comes to pass like that. It's because you did not influence it. Is that okay now? You must be able to influence it because when God shows it to you, it's God communicating to you, it's God talking to you. So it's your responsibility to either plead for mercy or avert it or change it or cause it to come to pass. Daniel said, I, Daniel, understand by books. The prophecy of Daniel had dream all the time. But there was a time that he couldn't see anything by dream. So you have to go back to Jeremiah's dream and encounters. And Jeremiah's prophecy was what Daniel hinge upon to be able to interpret what's going on in Babylon. Joseph only had a dream, but the dream is having you interpret them. So you need to go and study. Go and study on how Joseph, how people interpret dreams. I had, go and study that in my books. Dream interpretation. Okay? And uh, the prophetic ambition. Get it. You understand how to, what to do with your dreams when you have dreams. Your dreams are not for fun. God does not talk to you for fun. I dream almost every day also me too. God speaks to me through dreams. And all my dreams are very serious. So there are serious ones, but of course you know what to do with them when you study the book. It will give you good understanding of what you ought to do. But anytime you have dreams, it's not just for you to say, eh, how can I do? No, you have, to, you have a responsibility to play. And when you don't play, it will come to pass. For instance, you can dream that somebody is going to die. You can come and say, hey, I see somebody is going to die. How does that profit the person? No, go and pray about it. There is something that God is trying to communicate. Either to stop it or to inform the person for the person to get born again before time. Or something like that. So, you know, there is a responsibility to do I mean, in keeping to a dream you are having, you can have a dream and see anything. You must be able to either influence it positively or negatively before it gets to happen. If not, it will get to happen. And when it happens, you will be blamed for it. The Bible says, Son of man, if I show you a thing and you do nothing about it, if my, if my judgment comes upon the people, I will hold you responsible. But if I show you do something about it and they refuse to hear, when anything comes upon, they, they have blood to be upon their head. Okay, now. Is that understood? That's mean for him, okay. Is it okay? So the same person from Belgium said, um, the Lord has been putting in my heart evangelism programs to okay. carry on here in Belgium, but I lack so much confidence. I see myself as being the least. So when people come to me with spiritual problems, I want to run away. Oh, what advice? Okay, okay. I have to thank you so much. I love this question. Do you know why I love it? Because um, all of us are like that. See, let me tell you. Nobody is qualified for the things of God. Nobody. I have never seen anybody that does the work of God that is qualified. God never called anybody that is qualified. I'm telling you. The Bible says those who God called, He justified. Then He glorified. Okay? You see, anybody that is qualified doesn't need God. God called people, then He qualified them. And that is why the people you least expect that can do anything are the people that do it. Check many nations. People that take the nation are immigrants. Yeah, that's that. I'm very serious. Check a city. People that change the city. Sorry to say this. Oh. Abba is not from Makodi. Is that not true? Salman is not from Zaria. In fact, it's not even Abuja. Abuja is a no man land. Oedepo is not from Lagos. Yes, sir. Uh, TDJ is not from US. Right? Mm -hmm. Check. Uh, 
What is man? Mazonado. It's not from Miami. Everybody that conquer a region, they are not from that place. There are only few people that conquer their region that are from there. And most of them are either immigrant or qualified. They are not even qualified for what they do. Let me tell you, that's your point of disadvantage. It's a good advantage. When God called Moses, God said, Moses, I'm not qualified. Anybody that God called is not qualified. When God called Saul, Saul was not qualified. When God called Philip, Stephen, Philip is not qualified. But I was the worst of all sinners. I was the worst. There was nothing I did not do. God is my message. You understand what I'm saying? All the force that God used, we are not qualified. We don't have confidence. Before, how, how can I just turn my camera? How, how? Before the way I was so shy, eh? hey! My name is Shyness. I was so shy. I was so shy. But of course, see, it's personal development. My advice first, begin to develop yourself personally. Personal development is key to transformation. What does personal development mean? Go and find out. How do you build self-confidence? You see, many of you are on YouTube. I don't know what you use it for. Go, how to build self-confidence? Enter. How to become good? Bold, right? Enter. How to become a good public speaker? Enter. And let me tell you, as you listen to us, the spirit is transferred. Me, I didn't even do all this YouTube, Google, how to become. Mm -mm. All I knew is that I follow great men. When you follow people that are great, you become great. One of the first requirements for greatness is to look for a reference and follow that. One. Who do you listen to? If you listen to bold people, people that are bold and courageous for a while, you'll be bold and courageous. Maybe I'll listen for a while, but keep on doing it. Give yourself two years, one year. Listen to everything they say, whether they are joking. As I'm speaking now, if you are a public speaker, you'll be learning some things. That's how it works. So if you are, if I listen to people, I learn. I learn from their communication. I learn from their confidence. I learn from their posture. I learn everything. So you will learn that what we call personal development. Personal development go to look at people, what they do that works. You need to add it to your own self. That's all. So I know you are not confident. Don't worry. You will learn through the process. Go out there. The Bible said when the Holy Ghost came upon them, one of the things that he gave them was boldness. Peter was timid. He was shy. He couldn't do. But when the Holy Ghost came, Another point is this, learn to pray in the Holy Spirit for more long. I realize that anytime I want to speak, that time, I used to be shy. So I will pray in tongues for long. But sometimes when I come to the stage, as I, as I mount the truth, I begin to be ashamed. But I say, let's pray. When I start praying, 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 boldness will come. When that boldness comes, I'll start talking and talking and talking. What am I trying to say? You need to pray for long. You need to look at people, watch over people, watch people as... As you see them do the things you do, find proficient mentors and follow them and learn, learn everything they are doing. Then also, I command you in the name of Jesus to begin from where you are. Begin the shyness. You see, let me tell you, sometimes the Lord empowers you as you go out in obedience. As you go out, God will empower you. That's the truth. One thing I know is this, God will never leave you without empowerment. Try to go out. I would love to hear that report, please. Go out. You can. You may not do today again. Tomorrow, tomorrow when you step out in the street of Belgium, right? Anybody you see, talk to them about Jesus Christ. Talk to them. About, see, I've tried to raise. I've prayed for the dead. Sometimes they raise. Sometimes they don't raise. But let me tell you, the first key to raising the dead is to have the confidence and the courage to stand before one. The same way, the first key, eh? To pray for the sick is to have the confidence and the courage to stand before a sick person and pray. I'm not to say go to hospital. The first key to winning any person eh, is to stand before the person and say, Give your life to Christ. See, let me tell you, go out. I, I urge you, I challenge you, I dare you. As you go out tomorrow, eh, look for somebody. Stop the person. Hello, how are you doing? Good morning. How is everything? I know you are going to work, but can I speak to you for one minute? See, I don't have one minute. Okay, can I speak for 30 seconds? I don't know, okay, give me 10 seconds. Jesus loves you. That's all. At least you have done something. By the time you do it again and again and again and again, that shyness will go away naturally. Is that okay now? There is no way to conquer it than to actually step into the pool and face that challenge. Sometimes the way to conquer fear is to face it. The way to conquer shyness is to face it. Face it and you conquer it. You just realize that it was just a mirage. It was really not something that is real. It's an illusion. Is that okay now? So do not be afraid. I challenge you. What is the worst that can happen? Nothing. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. You will have an experience. But you enjoy it. It will be fun. I wish I'm there. We would have tell it. But it will be fun. Nothing will happen. I've gone out several times for those kind of things. You just have so many experiences. You enjoy them. 
Is that okay? So if God has called you to do this, please go and do it. Don't be afraid. You know, well, this kind of fear now is making you need to disobedience. Number one, you are not doing what God has called you to do. And let me tell you, you will not prosper until you do what God called you. I don't know, I don't care the job you are doing there. You are prosperity. God will prosper your job when you do his own work too. So your prosperity lies in doing what God says you should also do. So when God tells you to do your own, do, if God says do something for me, you refuse to do it for him, he will stop doing for you what he's doing for you. That's how it works. So you are actually disobeying God too. So go and do what God tells you to do. Don't be afraid. You don't need a megaphone. You need your mouth. You have your mouth. Go and start. Is that okay now? If you can't use your mouth and start now, even if we give you a megaphone, you can't do it. Is that right? So God will bless you. We have the last question from okay. Ogechi. Okay. My question is, is it okay to start reading the Bible and study it? Or must we start by studying the Bible? Okay. Um. The Bible says, study to show yourself what? A proof. You read the Bible, eh? You read the Bible for your personal consumption. Is that okay now? Let's say I want to come and do something. Right? I'm, I may study because I want to do it. I don't get what I'm saying now. But when I'm reading the Bible, eh, I'm reading for my personal consumption. I'm not even doing it because I want to preach. When you are reading the Bible because you want to preach, it's study. And when you are studying it because you want to show yourself approved as a workman, as somebody that is doing the work of God, that need not to be ashamed. So, oftentimes, you can see somebody that is not prepared. I'm telling you, when they come and is quoting here, quoting there, talking this, talking this light, talking that light, many people, are, many pastors don't read, they don't study, they don't even read at all. So, in the days where you cannot study, you read. But when a man reads very well, eh, he will study by default. How? The way you study eh, is to pay close attention to it, comparing scripture with scripture. The way you read is just to read straight and be going. For instance, now, if I want to study now, if I want to study, <clears throat> I will start by reading about righteousness and this and this. I will not look for another scripture again. I don't know about you, but you see, like this scripture has reference. You see, this reference is here. It will show me other scripture that's connected to it here. If you want to study, it's my responsibility to go and study other, other this one, this one, this one. And when I go here now, this one too, we have some other ones connected to it. This one is working now. So, comfort now. So, you keep on, then, I will not have, me, I have, I have lexicon. So, I will not go to lexicon and study the Hebrew, the Greek, you know. You are studying them just so that you can stop yourself, so that you can, when you come out to speak, of course, you are a man approved of God, you know. And as you are approved of God, you cannot be stupid there, because you need to be able to know. But by the time you are reading the scripture, you are just reading. The Bible says, cite the scripture, you need to find that. So you are just reading. Let's say I start studying from the book of First Timothy now. I start reading, 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 reading. I will not be going to check all these concordance or no. I'm not reading, reading, reading. What I'm doing is, the Bible says, cite the scripture, in it you will find life. So I'm not looking for you to find life so that I can just leave. I don't get the point now. So, when I wake up to read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's not because I want to preach it. No! There are some scriptures I've read that I've never even preached it before. I'm just saying so that I will just, I will just have life in myself. Do you understand now? I just want to have life, life within me. So, when you are studying the scripture, you are studying because you have something to do. And that is not, that is not always nice. That is not always nice. Why? Because, number one, when a man is studying, eh, he will be limited. When you are reading, eh, you are having life. So, many years ago, the Lord told me, Philip Cephas, a prepared man is always better than a prepared message. So, I can't remember when last I really study, study to preach. All what I do is that I read. I just spend time reading the scripture. I just read again and again and again and again. And let me tell you the truth. Because I read plenty, almost all these references are already in my head. Because I have read them before too. So, on my own, I can connect references and even the ones that are not even here. That's why you see me quote it. Sometimes you listen to my message. I don't really say let's open this book. But I can quote many scriptures because I have read them again and again. And I have read the Bible cover to cover more than five times. I'm just, just reading. I'm just reading. 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 When you dedicate yourself to reading, eh, you don't need to be doing studying and cross referencing. The thing will be in your head. So anytime you are in the plane, you are studying your head. When you are in the bus, you are studying. When you sit alone, the Bible begins to connect. You don't see this one, this one speaking to this one, this one speaking to this one. At that point, your study becomes immobilized. Sorry, your study becomes mobile, not immobilized. It becomes like a mobile altar, a mobile Bible moving on around. 
And that's what I'm saying now. So, which one should you do? Do all. Eh? And also add meditation to it. Don't just only read. Study. Don't just only study. Read. Combine all of them and do also meditation. Very, very important. But either way, devote yourself to it. Many people spend three hours on Facebook, but when they carry the Bible, they just spend like 20 minutes. They don't. And they're not closing. They don't carry Facebook. And they stay for three hours. They don't want to stay inside here for three hours. Sometimes until you stay again and you stay again before it can open. 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 The same way you can start talking with a friend like Joe. Before you know, the talk begin to go deeper and deeper and deeper. It's love as I will understand this. You won't understand if you are not in love. Because me I'm in love with Jesus, so I understand what I'm saying. So if you understand this and you can you just stay. Sometimes I just want to just study something for just or this something for just like three, four minutes, five minutes. Old. Before I know I'm there one hour. I'm just reading. Eh, I'm reading. 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 You are lost in it. Give it time. When you give it time, eh? You will study and read and meditate and combine all. How do you meditate? How do you meditate? Yes. Meditation is pondering. Meditation is is um is repetition. Meditation is concentration. Meditation is what we call sila. You ponder and you think. You see, many people study the Bible, they don't think about it. Meditation is creative thinking. You must we call it contemplative meditation. You must contemplate. For instance, now look at it. <clears throat> Let's see. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You stop there. You think it again. You read it again. You read it again. Then you begin to go after word by word. 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 Then you go from back forth again. I get what I'm saying. You look out for the key words there, the object there. You look out for the context. You look out for the object and the context of the scriptures. Because oftentimes, many people do not give attention to meditation. Why? Because they are not looking out for something. We could just study just and go. What are you looking out for? When you begin to look out for something, is meditation. And oftentimes, this is the way you do it. Number one, you isolate yourself. When you isolate yourself, Oftentimes, people create a mantra. A mantra is maybe a sound, a sound or a message. Then you ponder, you focus your thinking towards that scripture. And as you focus your thinking towards that scripture, you open your heart for it. For me, this is how I do. I focus my thinking towards the scripture. Then I focus my thinking towards towards the the context. Maybe what is righteousness. I begin to ask myself questions. What is righteousness? Then scripture will begin to come to me for righteousness. Then I now begin to now ponder more on those scriptures. And when I ponder them on those scriptures, I'm not muttering tongues, I'm not praying again. So I'm generating energy that can help me explain that. Then, as energy is generated, suddenly ideas begin to come. As ideas come, I begin to write them down. So, meditation eh, is constant repetition of what you know. You repeat it again, and repeat it again, and repeat until you enter your subconsciousness. That's meditation. It's dwelling with what you know. The psalm is always put in that when he writes something, he says, Sila. What it means is that stop there and ponder first. Don't just go to the next one, the next one, you know, stop there. Then think, ponder. So, when you are thinking, what you are trying to do is to change it from your conscious mind to your subconscious mind. Because when a man is thinking, he knows what is available in the conscious mind. But now he wants to shift it to the, to the subconscious mind. So, that's why he will now. Just like sometimes, you just, maybe let's say you are talking, as, I'm developing tomorrow. We have been talking, talking, talking about, I'm devoted to more than that. Stop. What do you say? Now, it's not you have it to, but you want to actually really, is it really serious that you are divorcing me tomorrow? That's how it works. So, you know, meditation is like pausing what you know, normally in the conscious mind, then uh, rethink it again so that it can enter your subconscious mind. It's giving attention to a body of truth or a sentence or a pieces of truth that you know. Until it becomes you. And meditation is what makes the world to become flesh. This thing cannot be explained. It can only be experienced. So go and experience it. What I mean is this simple. You can just take three verses of scripture. Right? And read it again and again and again. Then, you can lie down. Just thinking about it. 
When you start to think, don't think about your boyfriend, don't think about your girlfriend, don't think about the food you are not eating, don't think about the money you are about to make. No, don't think about the stock market, don't think about uh, Bitcoin or what they call it, Forex or crypto. You know, sometimes it's very hard not to think about some of those things. But let me tell you, try as much as focus on the scripture because sometimes it's hard to do that. But if you can do that, an energy is better. So you can go to also speak with your mom. For instance, now, you speak it. For God so love the world that you know most time you read and you are not touching it. Meditation is you speaking it. You must be able to speak it as you are speaking it out. As you are speaking it out, you are speaking it out, you are speaking it out. It begins to be regurgitated. It's just like um luminant animals. Luminant animals. Most of these fortune bath fortune bath animals, you see what they do. They will go and eat grass, eat hay, they will come and lie down later, and they are now bringing it out from their first chamber stomach. To their court, then they will chew the court again. So before actually they eat it, they chew, they think pass through their mouth, <coughs> but they are bringing it back again to chew it again. And that's what meditation is. Meditation is see bringing out what you know in your mind again and saying saying it to yourself again and again and again and again and assimilating it. And that would require concentration. That would require you to be concentrated to something, right? Because when they do it, they are concentrated to it and they are focused on it. And that's what meditation is. And you must give attention to it. But you need a mantra. What is a mantra? A mantra is something that will keep you constant. Sometimes um, you can play a message or play a worship or play something. But you must have a time of... For instance, now you have a ministration to go and do, right? Don't just come out from just... You are busy, maybe you went, you are on a road, you came back on a road from a trip or you are from a flight, you just came down and go straight to the hall. You see, we used to do that, but it's not always good. Even my SD, but it's not good. Why? Because you need time to meditate. Meditation brings you all to oneness, right? It brings you to oneness. Because all the time when you meditate, when you go to speak, your speakers are more articulate. Why? Because they are constructive. So but by the time you just come straight and go, you know you are just disenfranchised. So you must be able to spend time alone. So oftentimes when you are meditating, it's because you are spending time alone. Not just only reading the Bible, but when you are done reading the Bible, you now sit and begin to think about the things you have read. You just start pondering and they start thinking about them. As you are doing that, suddenly light and revelation begin to bet more again on you. Okay? Very, very important. Have yes, I answered that? Well, okay. Okay. The prayers now. Okay. So, can, can we just pray in one minute? Uh, let me just decree over you. And ask that the Lord strengthen and empower you in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree over each and every one. Can you just open your mouth and begin to pray and say, Father, I enter this new year with a new strength, a new grace, a new power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for each and every one connected even right now. It doesn't matter wherever you are, whether US or UK or anywhere or Nigeria. I speak unto your life right now by the power of the Spirit of the Lord. I do pray together with you. I shift you in this new year. I pray that whatsoever that concerns you in this new year, 2022, let it become a successful testimony in the name of Jesus. Everything you have either to desire to do in this new year, we cause it to become fruitful in the name of Jesus. And the many things that you have been doing prior before this year, we decree and we declare that in this year, let it be multiplied in the name of Jesus. Let there be a multiplier effect on everything you do in the name of Jesus. I release the grace and the strength and the power of the Lord upon you. Let everything that looks like a challenge, everything that looks like a resistance over your life be broken down in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every kind of oppression, every kind of attack, every kind of resistance built by demonic spirit, I break through them for you in the name of Jesus. I release the grace and the power and the spirit of the Lord against the witchcraft, against the divination, against the manipulation against the operation, against the torment of your soul. Right now, I say let that spirit be over your life in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that you are healed over that oppression. 
I stand against every doctor's report. Whatsoever doctors have reported, they have tried their best. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right now in the name of Jesus, I say be delivered right now in the name of Jesus. Every kind of pain in your body, every kind of oppression in your body, I say right now be healed in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare by the power of the Spirit of the Lord. Many of you are going through all kinds of depression, every kinds of delay, every kinds of denial. I say let that depression be over your life in the name of Jesus. Let that delay be over in the name of Jesus. I create for you a new appointment for the disappointment, for the discouragement. I release the grace of the Lord that can cause things to be to be established in your life in the name of Jesus. I release the Mishiach anointing. They are anointed for completion and expansion over your life right now in the name of Jesus. I bless you with the blessings of heaven. I pray for many of you, your children that are wayward and return them back home, back to the kingdom in the name of Jesus. May the Lord Jesus encounter them and visit them in the name of Jesus. I release supernatural encounters and visitation over your life from today. May the Lord see you worthy a candidate for him to help. Let the Lord God that help me help you in the name of Jesus. You must be relevant in today's society. You must be relevant in today's society. Your life will not be wasted. May you be impactful. May men and women come to know the Lord through you in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that the things that the Lord has called you to do in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive the grace to accomplish it right now in the name of Jesus. I release the grace for the accomplishment of your God-given assignment upon the face of the earth in the name of Jesus. You will not, you will not remain unfruitful in the name of Jesus. I decree that even in your workplace, even in your businesses, even in your association, I bless the workings of your hand. Whatsoever you lay your hands to do, I decree and I declare that let it prosper in the name of Jesus. I bless you with the blessings of heaven. Many of you are sick in your body. Right now, I say be healed. Many of you are oppressed in your body. I say right now, be healed. Every demonic spirit, I say be gone. You are healed and you are delivered in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for you. Many of you are trusting the Lord for an appointment, for an admission. I grant it unto you right now in the name of Jesus. I join faith together with you. I say this year, there will be testimonies over your life abundantly in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord God of heaven do for you a miracle, a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus. I pray that let men and women honor you. Let men and men and women favor you in the name of Jesus. I bless your going out and your coming in. I pray over your finances. Your finances are blessed. I decree and I declare that every channel where which the Lord blesses you, let us channels increase in the name of Jesus. Let God send men and women that will favor you, that will bless you, that will honor you in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare over your finances. I say it is blessed. Every waste, every bad investment, everything that has been lost, let it be restored in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for you in your school, your academics. May the grace to be able to prosper, the grace to be able to complain rest upon you. I pray for peace and harmony even in your own homes in the name of Jesus. I pray for your ministry. Let there be a shift in your ministry in the name of Jesus. Let there be a shift in your churches in the name of Jesus. I release the grace the power and the anointing of the Lord upon your life from today. I activate the giftings of the Spirit over your life. I activate the giftings of the Spirit. Go and begin to manifest. Go and begin to give it expression. May the Lord God of heaven stir you up. May the Lord put your burden upon your heart to give expression to the dictate of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. I bless you with the blessings of heaven. I decree and I declare that by the power of the Spirit of the Lord, may the Lord send men and women that will uphold you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. I ask that every spirit of depression is over right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that depression. I said, let it be over in the name of Jesus. Every demonic encumbrances and every weakness of the body, I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Every pain in your body, I say, be gone right now in the name of Jesus. Every eye condition, I say, be she right now in the name of Jesus. Every breathing condition, I say, be she right now in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are sick in your body, I stretch out my hand. I release the grace of healing upon you right now. The virtue of healing, touch healing right now in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. I use it as a point of contact to your siblings, to your children, to your family, to your loved ones. I say they are healed in the name of Jesus. They are delivered in the name of Jesus. I bless you with the blessings of heaven. May the Lord God of heaven favor you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, amen and amen. I pray for you that may the Lord God of heaven put his a passion a zeal and a desire to love him more than this. May you love the Lord more than this. May the grace and the discipline to study, to pray and to fast rest upon you from today in the name of Jesus. May you pay attention to the things of God. I rebuke every calamity in your life. May you walk in the spirit. May doors be opened for you. Doors of opportunities be opened for you in the name of Jesus. 
I bless you all with the blessings of heaven. All the sacrifices that you have made over time, all the sacrifices you given to kingdom advancement, they will not be a waste in the name of Jesus. May the Lord God of heaven reward you for your faithfulness, for your diligence, for your sacrifice, even of labor, of love, of prayer. May God reward you. If the cloud be full of rain, it will empty itself. I decree. Let the time of life and the time of manifestation be now. As you go out today, let there be testimonies. Let there be miracles. Let there be signs. Let God do a thing that you know is Him that do it for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord strengthen you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so, so much for praying. Thank you so much for everything. Um, we shall be praying again on Friday, the same time. Uh, for the other prayer hubs, please take out time and ensure that you are constant in your time of prayer. You are not doing this unto me, you are doing it unto God. And you are also doing it to energize yourself in the spirit. And many of you, this is the way to lead. Okay, man, the person that is saying you are shy, if you can lead in prayer hub, you won't be shy again. Give the person leadership, let the person lead. Eh? Take out time and lead us. If you can lead us, then you can see us. We will be able to lead other people that, uh, that you can see. Okay? The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. I love you all. I miss each and every one of you. Like I said, we need to find time to talk. I don't know what we're going to do. Eh? We need, I need to call everybody one by one. Let's talk. Maybe we'll just gist, just gist me how your day is going. <laughs> uh, so at least, eh? we need to find time to, <clears throat> to talk. Eh? So I think I will call everyone one by one. I trust God. And I will try. And please, don't die in silence. If there's an issue, Reach out to me, send a chat, call me, let me, when you call me, if I miss your call, I will call you back, if I miss your call, just send a chat, do a call, or reach out to each other, pray for each other, pray with each other. The body of Christ is a family, all these my denomination, my, these, those things are, the, you'll be shocked when you go to heaven, <laughs> you'll be shocked that uh, those logos are not there, is that okay? So please, do your best, do your best. The people you see here are the people that, this is the God, this is the kingdom, eh? do your best to love each other and stand by each other, pray for each other. Is that okay? There are many you can give to people apart from money. You can give them your prayers. Pray for them. You can give them your counsel, your wisdom. But at least do something. Is that okay? The Lord will see you too. Thank you so much. Like I said, Happy New Year. Happy Merry Christmas. Happy New Month. And I love you all. The God will see us too. So I don't know. Uh, thank you so much, Osas, for the great work. It's not been easy on him. You know, leadership is a strong, it's a strong responsibility. It's only serious people that lead. You know, followers are. Uh, they are trying, but when you really want to be at the among them that make change, you be a leader. Okay? And nobody is born a leader. It's a lie. Leaders are made. They are developed over time. If a born leader is lazy, he will become nothing. He will be a ladder. The other can climb. Okay? So please, <coughs> God, God, God will help you. Mm -hmm. As leaders, be leaders. Don't, don't just, anywhere you are, be responsible. Whether in your ministry is there. Whether your church is there, whether the little three people you are leading, please be responsible. God give you one person, lead the person right. God give you two, lead them right. Do your best. And God will see us through. Okay. Um, I don't know how many people. Uh, let me appreciate. Um, so is there anything that anybody wants to say something? I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, I put also on the mic. Okay, what's that? What's that? Just type and say thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Can you switch on the, on the video? Okay. Switch it off, like switch off. Okay, so audio, audio. Okay, okay. Audio, audio. okay so thank you so much. Okay, and God bless you all.